Hello, everybody. If it's Wednesday, it's Warhammer, and that must mean it's time for another episode of Warhammer Weekly. Joining me, as always, my co-host, Tom. What's up, buddy? How you doing, man? Hello, friends. Don't worry, they haven't adjusted Tom's points up or down. He remains just as deadly as ever. Also joining us this week, the man himself, the myth, the legend, the world traveler, one of, as, as Rob says, one of the sexiest men in Warhammer. It's Dan from AOS Shorts. How you doing, buddy? Nope, oh, we lost him. There he is. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> <laughs> he I was taken aback uh, by the compliments. Yeah, <laughs> clearly uh, short circuited me. Uh, thank you very much for having me. As always, pleasure to be on, guys. Pleasure for you to be here, sir. We are going to be talking about the uh, GHB 2019 tonight. This is part one. Look, there's a lot to unpack here. Too much for one show. Uh, not to mention the fact that there's going to be even more in a couple weeks when we get the FAQ slash rest of the points adjustments in a PDF. We'll talk about all that when we get in the news. But this is going to be something. I mean, this is, you know, one of the big events of the year, uh, really, for our AOS community. Uh, so, you know, there's going to be a lot to unpack. But this is part one, and we're going to talk about everything we can talk about. But first, the news. What's up, Tom? What do you got, buddy? Um rumor engine it's a 40k thing i don't care next <laughs> thank you next uh ever chosen full rules announced yeah so this is interesting i did want to take a moment on this so they announced no, it's a, a painting competition it's not interesting done <laughs> fair but uh <laughs> but i want to talk about it for a minute because they did answer some of the questions i was interested in that i thought i would highlight because you have to dig into the actual like legal rules to learn this stuff right like a lot of this isn't in Obvious. the yeah it's not in the the like uh the original post okay so we all know from the previous discussion that to enter the competition you bring your miniature it has to be sold a current model sold on the website on a on a base no larger than 60 millimeters right okay yeah all right that's what's available you're with me so far right sure okay you gotta so, bring go mega boss got it Mega boss would be a great example. Yes, the mega boss, not on Maw Crusher. That's too big. Just the foot mega boss. Yes, great example. Uh, and and in my opinion, a very strong contender. And what I might be taking. How about that? Uh, Is it really? And, yeah, Man, really. If, if you and I, <laughs> that's you're pretty good, Tom. You're pretty good. Uh, okay, so you bring it in. Fine. You leave it there at the store so that it can be included in the initial public vote. Basically, everybody when you come in, you get a little card. You fill out some information, you you place your vote. This is the thing you vote for, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And then your miniature wins the initial public vote, which is just you got the most votes out of everybody who visited the store that day, right? Sure. Okay, cool. So then if that happens, you need to photograph it, okay? Mm -hmm. And yep. you send the photograph. You basically upload it to... And what's funny is in the legal document, they have the whole... The whole like website it gets uploaded to, uh, yep. but basically you're the one uploading it. Okay, yep. then you're responsible for your own photographer. That's right, exactly. Which was a big question, right? And then from August fifteenth to August thirty first, there is a second online vote. Okay. Yep. Of basically anybody in the world who votes who who visits that website which is like warhammercommunity.com backslash everchosen or whatever. Right. And you can score the entries from one to five and blah, blah, blah. Like they show them to you in a random order. You can score as many as you few as you want, so on and so forth. Yeah. Sure. So then we have second public vote. Following the big public vote, they cut to the top a hundred entries. Okay? okay. And those hundred entries then get judged by like the golden demon painting judges slash the, that rotating council of judges plus the Warhammer TV painting crew. Right. So Nick okay. and peachy and Duncan, yep. right. And they decide the top three entries, uh, including the winning entries. Right. Yep. And then basically all three of those people, uh, have to come to, uh, Warhammer come to World. like the event in Warhammer world. 
Yes. So there you go. Uh, other small, funny, interesting things is that like this is happening all over the world. All right. Sure. So, right. Obviously. So, you know, people could people could fly in from anywhere. You have to be at least age 16 or over. Yeah. You cannot be an employee of the company or or mm -hmm. a member of their immediate household. And you can't live in Quebec. <laughs> <laughs> Suck it, Canada. <laughs> the whole rest of the world. You're fine. I guess I think it's because Quebec has some very like strange and I think like competition. Yeah, yeah, like apparently very, very Sweet. harsh and perhaps a bit uh, arbitrary gambling laws that that can be read in several ways. And so it opens them up to a suit if they run it in Quebec. So oh, poor Quebec. There you go. So take that, Quebec. Um, I guess you got to move your address real quick if you want that Slayer sword. Uh, but there you go. That's the that's the ever chosen combination. No, I just thought it was interesting. If you want the ever chosen sword, sorry, yes, uh, that's absolutely right. Uh, the sword of kings, sorry, the slayer of kings, sorry. Um, and yes, it will still be a red neg one, so don't worry. If you strap on any reasonable amount of armor, you're totally <laughs> safe. Uh, the but I thought that was interesting because that was part of what we had talked about, right? Like who was doing yeah. the photos and. Were the you know were the judges were, were the golden demon judges going to have to review fifteen hundred entries, right? Uh, yeah. But of course, then that's interesting because now you have two rounds of public voting. So I'll tell you this: my strong feeling, given that it's just a wide open public vote, this yep. this is we have entered complete opinion land territory. Please take this for nothing more than it is. But I would say that the forty k entries will be stronger than the AOS entries. Just uh, by mere community presence. 40K has a really, really, really big following comparatively, right? And, yep. you know, so, and there's a lot of people that love Space Marines. So, just True. saying, just throwing that out there. There you go. Dan, are you putting so, something in? You putting no. anything in your local store? <laughs> no. Um, I have never been to my local uh, games workshop store. <laughs> It's somewhere in the depths of Mount Albert in Auckland um, and basically doesn't interact with our local community. Um, so, no. But also, I'm not particularly a painter, so I wouldn't have entered anyway. <clears throat> gotcha. All right. Fair enough. Uh, mine is some distance away and Tom will be here, so I may have to head out maybe in the morning <laughs> before we start our marathon game, <laughs> drop it off, something like that. We'll see what happens. I don't know. You think You think that's how it's going to work? I'm going to drop off an entry here in Lexington and one in Lacombe Columbus. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Playing play yeah. the odd. Way to go. Uh, all right. At any, way, at any rate, uh, Nick, by the way. Greater, he didn't. Sure. <laughs> By the way, uh, uh, Dan Bartek says that he's building some centigors for your game later this afternoon. So, hey, there you go. As long as he puts them in for the enlightened that he took on the weekend, then I'm happy. <laughs> 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 you don't believe that blooming wildfire Taurus at home. Those things are nasty. There you go. Uh, well, we'll we'll talk a little about the wildfire Taurus a little bit later because it 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 got uh, it got perhaps we might say a little more interesting. All right, so what else have we got in news, Tom? Um, the uh, story anniversary exclusive. We have, folks, more Stormcast. And I actually really like this model. This model is <laughs> awesome. What are you talking about? It's like <laughs> one, of the most, it's one of the most amazing Stormcast they've ever made. That thing blew me away. I thought she was fantastic. Did like you she's, see the photo? Did the you tennis see the racket shot? change is yeah. very funny, yes. Yeah, but, like, it, she's really good. Like, I... Given that whole, like, you know, she's doing one of these, right? Clearly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I thought she was super sweet. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm buying her. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I need to figure out when my store anniversary is. They have a big list. Like, I need to figure out what the closest store anniversary is so I can go get but one. But you need to know the name of your store. Right, exactly. I was like, what do all these mean? Like, my store is called by my city's name. All the rest of them have their weird, like, suburb names in the U.S. I'm like, I don't know where that is. Where is right, that? Like, like, mine is the Man of War store. Sure. Sure, why not? Absolutely. Yeah. Is, it in, is it in Atlantis? <laughs> is that where your store nope. is? Nope. Nope. Okay. It could have been, like, Seabiscuit or whatever. All of our streets are named after horses around here. Yeah, uh, sure, sure, sure. I understand, yeah. Kentucky thing, I get it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I thought she was sweet as all get out, man. Uh, so, um, I'm and, all about that. 
And I'm hoping like the bat. This is gonna be a small critique that it like is gonna impact no one but me. But like, I hope their backpack next year is bigger than this. That is a very. <laughs> I've never seen one of those before until now. Here you go. Here, here's a fire slayer next to my backpack. It's a very small backpack. It's a tiny backpack. So um, maybe like I, could next barely, year. I could barely fit your decapitated head in that backpack. That's the first thought that came to my mind. I know. That's the point. And so I'm really hoping that uh, they uh, they step up their backpack game this year so I can actually put books in my AOS backpack that uh, I spent hundreds of dollars to acquire. Sure, sure. Let's see. We got to up the backpack game. Yeah. Dan, what did you think of the, uh, of the, is he still there? Do you lean to the side? Do you lean off camera? Oh, there you are. Hey, you <laughs> just like popped back in like a Muppet. Uh, <laughs> <are> you... <laughs> uh, did you, uh, what do you think of the new Stormcast model, Dan? It's lovely. It's lovely. It's a nice go. I like it. Good. Yeah. Yeah, she's real good for like. I saw her and I immediately saw a competition model. She's big. Mm -hmm. She's expressive, like in her pose. She's open. Like you want an open model for a competition model, so you're not trying to mess with getting in to hidden spaces and messing with sub assemblies and crap like that. So yeah, I uh, I dig it. I gotta get my hands on one of them. Cool. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So good stuff. Uh, you know, cool. I I'm sure she'll have rules that'll be really good at killing monsters, and nobody will have her. She'll be the she'll be the <laughs> new um. Whatever the other one was, the the spooky boy with you know particular lantern or whatever that well, people like. It, it said she's a night quester, right? So immediately you know it's it's bad, and who cares? That's my point. She's gonna be a quester <laughs> who's like slightly good at killing monsters, hence no loss. Like she'll be pretty good for that, right? <laughs> right? Right? By that standard, but that's like here's average. Here's where the quester currently is. I need. I can't go lower. I need to get way off camera. She's like there. She's better. Right. Still still below. Mm -hmm. That's the point. Yeah. Still below the benchmark, poor, as it were. Poor questers. Yeah. Well, say la vie, right? What do you do? Okay. What else we got yeah. news wise? That's what happens when you get released in board games. Um <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh your dumb Olympia class. Oh, geez, man, that's harsh. Uh, it's this weekend. Uh, I fly out on Friday. There are still a couple seats. So if you're in the Washington area, uh, which, by the way, Olympia, thats a, I did not realize how far that was from Seattle. I thought it was closer. It's not. Uh, so I had to like, oh, I better rent a car this week. I had to figure that out because um, surprisingly, I cannot fly directly into Olympia. That's not how the world works. So uh, but I'm, I'm excited about that. We're doing the Night Titan class, painting a robot. Uh, so if you want to come hang out with me, we would love to see you there. It'll be a great time, but I look forward to seeing all the students this weekend. It's going to be super fun. All right. So with that, let's head to our brand new segment. What's going on? New segment events. Let's talk about some events because people have been sending us some events. So we're going to talk about them right now. So Tom, what do we got for events? This is also your responsibility, by the way. Oh no, we didn't divvy that up. Okay. Nope. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh sure i'm just gonna go down the line uh nova two events have been added a 2k three game competitive one day thursday and nightly uh fun event yeah so the competitive one day is on thursday that'll be an interesting run and then a nightly fun event i don't know what that means but it's a thing oh i was i was yeah apparently it's up on the site so there's more uh there's more like information. If you go look at the description where you can buy the ticket on the Nova site on the registration, do that. Uh, the, uh, this is not in the new or not on the list, but I'm going to do it anyways. Um, uh, uh, Jimbo reached out to me. They are doing a fundraiser, an Epic narrative game to raise money for, uh, um, mind over the realms. So there, it's going to be like a live streamed event uh, for Mind, the mental health charity, um, and they have a targeted ra to raise a um, thousand uh, uh, squig dollars, squiddy dollars. I don't know, <laughs> little squiggy ones. Um, 
You talking about <laughs> British money? Is that what you're aiming yeah, at here? Whatever. The, whatever that fake. Whatever that fake thing is, it's going to disappear when Brexit happens. Um, <laughs> That's not how that works at all. <laughs> That's not one of the consequences of this. <laughs> Geopolitics. Stay in your lane, Tom. Stay in okay. your lane. I'm um, back. Um, so they're they're like forty ish percent raised, and so uh, we want to. They're doing this big event, and they're raising money to support this mental health charity. And so we'll drop the link down below and you can uh, support that event. So this is not an event you go to. This is an event you support. Um, uh, do you want to do something? Want to do Flying Monkey? Yeah, sure. So Flying Monkey GT is happening this weekend and it's going to have some live coverage with our, <laughs> our, our good friend of the show, Tyler Emerson, Scrubby and Wells and, uh, and Chad Graham are doing a video coverage of the Flying Monkey AOS GT this weekend. Uh, and so you can actually watch it on Twitch. Uh, they'll be live streaming it and or posting recorded games shortly after, depending on like, you know, how the connectivity cooperates for the, the, the venue. Uh, but I will link the Twitch channel uh, down below and the YouTube channel where you can find it. So if you're around this weekend and you want to watch some fun streamed War Hammer commentated by... Uh, our very own Scrubby and Wells. If you want to hear his dulcet tones back in your ears, uh, then you've got a chance. So those links will be down below. And then I think down Australia way, there's a big tournament happening as well. Dan, I know you said you wanted to mention this one. There is. So uh, Lord of War uh, being run by the Dwellers Lads out of Melbourne. Uh, in particularly Nick, I gather Sam's uh, <laughs> just there for sort of the appearance. Um mm -hmm. <laughs> Good friend, uh, Sam Morgan. Uh, so, yeah, large Melbourne event um, this weekend. Um, they are live streaming games and doing reported coverage on their Dwellers Below Twitch channel. Um, so that's where you'll find it. Which will also be linked down below. And the advantage for us here in the top of the world, as it were, uh, and over in this hemisphere, is that uh, we get to watch all those on Friday. Because if they're if you're streaming a, a Saturday game in Australia, we actually get to see it on Friday. So hey, you get to watch Warhammer in the future. Woo! <laughs> so yeah, it's actually, good, it's actually good timing for the US. It's horrendous timing for the UK, but it's good timing for the US. Yeah, it lined up rather well. Like when they do it, uh, when Honest Wargamer did the uh, CanCon coverage, it was pretty much just like watching the normal <laughs> coverage. It was great. It worked out perfectly. Uh, it was, it was, and that was some great coverage. So yeah, I'm excited about that. Uh, this isn't my pick of the week, but just as a, a slight aside, uh, if you're interested in seeing some of the lists from the Lord of War tournament, uh, our good buddy, Doom and Darkness did a review show with Smorgan and Haywo Twitch, uh, on his channel. So you can watch the two hour plus list review show. Always a good time when Doom starts reviewing lists. Uh, <laughs> Doom is the nicest guy in the world to everybody, no matter what they have in their list. They're top tenning. They're always highly competitive. But then he he brings in Smorgan and Haywood to play the bad guy. See, this is all like a big, this is some big scheme by Doom to make himself look like the really nice person. And he brings in the other people to be the hitmen. I get what it's on. I get what he's on about. So I'm on to you, Doom. I'm on to you. <laughs> Solid host tactics there. <clears throat> yep. He's uh he's keeping his own hands clean and letting other people do his dirty work for him. Uh, I mean, checks out. Sure. All right. So uh, that's and I then believe... finally, uh, oh, sound the war plumes. Right? Is that plums? Isn't it plums? plums? Uh, plums yes, plums. war yes. plums. That's the flying go. monkey GT. Yeah. Oh, got it. Got it. Got it. Yep. yep. Uh, exactly. And I think that's our events. There you go. Okay. So with that, uh, let's talk about some pick of the week. Speaking of pick of the week, Dan, what would you like to share everybody or direct everybody to? And if you want to say that thing I just mentioned, that's a fair answer. But if you got a second thing, you can do that too. Uh, no, I'll go for um, the Honest Wargamer faction. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go for it. <laughs> you, you can both pick it because it's fine. There's enough episodes. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Rob just locked himself in his studio for like four days and just did episodes. Yeah, that's so, what yeah. he actually said to me on Friday night when we were recording the KO one. <laughs> yeah. 
Mm-hmm. I've, I've listened to all of them this week. Um, wow. Effectively on double speed or one and a half speed in order to get through them. But um, I have listened to all of them. The other thing I've been playing with is these, which are sort of... Yeah. Hang- the magnetic ones? Right? Yep. Yeah. Do you so like them? They're incredibly thin. I was expecting them to be sort of bendy, but like... Nah, mm. very, very solid. Um, great low well, profile. Either they're very solid or you're very weak. I we don't we haven't gotten any <laughs> proof either way yet. I don't know which way it could go, but I'll take your I'll take your 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 word for Analysis. it right now. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so bold move. But yeah, how do you like them? How do you find those? Like how, how do you, you know? I like them. I like them for the flexibility, and I'm looking forward to when my magna rack turns up, having mm. to just straight off the magna rack onto these um, onto the table. Um, I like the the longer ones. So you've got mm-hmm. the ones like there. You can just sort of rather than lifting them off, you can just move them along. And yep. I like the fact that rather than having to pick up the edge of the tray, you just grab the model on the top. And the magnet's strong enough that you can just move by just picking the model up, and you're not going to pull your model apart or anything like that. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been staring at those for a while, so I think I'm probably going to pull the trigger on them. Yeah, no, I like them. They're good. Well, there you go. Awesome, I dig it. That's those are two excellent picks. Uh, Tom, are you are you picking your? Is there any particular uh, faction reaction, Tom, that you might want to direct people to? Yeah, absolutely. There was a really good Iron Jaws one. <laughs> <laughs> the one by Nathan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, that just shows that Iron Jaws are so good. They couldn't, one faction reaction couldn't contain them. We needed two, two well, faction reactions. Well, originally, talk, I talked to him about maybe doing uh, Night Haunt as well, um, because it's what I'm looking at getting into. And he's like, oh, well, you know, he's like, I, I have somebody, you know, I have another fo- individual lined up. He's like, let's absolutely do it. And I'm like, I'm not going to be your, like, leftovers. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to do double time on, on Night Haunt. He's like, no, no, no. And I'm like, nope. No, I'll do something else. It's fine. It's fine. So, yes, you did KO. There's a lot of there's a lot of good ones, yes. They've, they've made their way through uh, an absolute just ton of the various factions. Uh, and there's a lot of good stuff there. I, I haven't gotten to listen to um, Ben's yet, but I saw Ben did the Daughters of Cain one, which I'm keen to listen to. And I think what Scourge Privateers came up today, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, oh, I did. oh, if Rob's in the comments, uh, I want to do Swift Talk Agents. We're doing that. Sure. I'm sure we can. I'm sure we can get the critical Swift Talk reaction. You and the three other people in the world who love that faction. There are <laughs> Are in fact, I think <laughs> there are not Paul, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, Paul's. There are in fact four of us in the uh WhatsApp chat, so it was me and three other people <laughs> 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 in the world. Um, but and Paul is one of those, but yeah, we're, we, we were talking about it today. We're gonna break, we're bringing it back. Paul's a gem, Ma- uh, male yeah. men unite. That's I, I. I can't wait. I can't wait to see the 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 new meta dominated by Swift Hawk agents. It's gonna be uh it's gonna be amazing. All Vince, right. Yes. Be careful. I may end up with Swift Hawk at at Holy Havoc. Yeah, I would love to see you have Swift Hawk at Holy Havoc. You know that's not you're you're talking to me like that would be a sad thing for me. It's not at all. <laughs> You've just gotta slaneshify them. That's all Oh no, nope, nope. Either that or they've all gotta be delivering like uh, erotic fiction. I would also accept that. <laughs> if, that's what the, if that's what the cart's full of. If that's what's in the mail. I'm okay with it. Uh, I have a package to deliver. Yeah, there's... Uh, you can... So, yeah. for like... Um, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, for scale modeling, you know, like, traditionally scale modelers will, will want to have, like, posters on the walls of things they build mm-hmm. and like little magazines for cars. Like, you know, like a lot of times people will do old rundown cars that'll have magazines and newspapers sure. and stuff like that in the back seat. If you've seen like these kind of dioramas that scale modelers use. So they sell different uh, like printout sheets. You can print to different sizes and they tell you like what percentage to basically print it out. 
to set the scale, right? So sure, like you can make sure. it match to the scale. And one of those sizes that you can make it match like 28 millimeter stuff, right? right? And they have like various, you know, like Playboy covers or stuff like that, right? Like they have those yeah. in there for, for that kind of thing because you just, you know, whatever. You uh, so I'm just saying, you wouldn't even have to make anything fresh, Tom. There you go. You're good to go. Just ready, ready, ready to. This is this is this army is is coming together. All right, uh, or not. Um, but I I don't know that. Uh, I don't know. Like I, if I do it, I'm not gonna theme at all with you. Like I'm, I'm just like I'm gonna do my own thing. Just let you know. <laughs> That's fine. Whatever you like. Uh, okay. Uh, so my pick of the week, uh, is there's been a lot of interesting, obviously there's a million videos on contra on contrast paints and things like that. I will be making a video too. Why not? But, uh, don't worry, but, uh, exactly. That's, that's me following them clicks by making the video like three weeks late, uh, <laughs> right on the right finger on the pulse. That's me. Um, but the, uh, I do want to direct everybody to a great couple videos. Uh, so James Waffle, who's an artist I very, very, very much respect, uh, who is a great, great miniature painter and artist, did a very fun sort of four or five hours of painting mm -hmm. by mixing contrasts with normal paints in lots of interesting ways, showing you how they can work in different styles. Um, it's a really fascinating and unusual exploration of contrast paints because James uh, paints in a very different way, um, shows how he uses them. He's basically using them like quick drying oil paints with what he's achieving with them. And I think it's really awesome. Uh, the effects and the results he gets are uh, absolutely fantastic. So uh, I, I'll, I'll link that video below. He's done, like I say, he's done about five hours now. He, he does it. He, his Twitch stream goes up on YouTube, of course. And... <clears throat> So he, you see, I think he's just experimenting live and trying stuff. Uh, I watched all those and I thought they were absolutely great. Um, so yeah, that would be, that's a high recommend for me. Uh, he shows how he mixes them together to get fun, different colors, how he mixes them with other paints to do interesting things and effects. Uh, so absolutely super fantastic exploration of the paint from an artist who understands at a deep level the way paint works. And by the way, that's not a judgment on anybody else's videos. There are lots of good artists who have put out great videos. I'm just saying like James is really somebody who explores and worked in 2d art for a long time before coming to miniature painting. It's a worthwhile watch. So there you go. Okay. Uh, I'll link those down below. Check them out. So let's talk about hobby time. Dan, what are you working on, man? You put any contrast paints to use? You get any, what's on your hobby table? This is what is on my coffee table. That is Spike <laughs> Ragnar. <laughs> yeah. What, why would you ever want to do that? They're terrible. I mean, <laughs> in the current book. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I was just sitting there going, well, what am I going to do before the new book? I might as well just finish the things which I haven't built. Um, <laughs> the old book. So these boxes of Spike Revenants got built. <clears throat> And how many spite um, revenants do you have now to, to paint? 60, right? I've got, I've got 30 at the moment. I've got another 40 coming in the post, and then I'm deciding if I'm going to pull the trigger on another 20. <clears throat> yeah! <laughs> I love it. <clears throat> that, um, is, uh, that is more spite revenants. Like, outside of Dreadwood, that is, that is more spite revenants you will own than have been played on tables around the world in the last year, outside of Dreadwood. That's like... Yeah. That, that <laughs> right there... But but now, like in the new battalion, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well, we can yeah. all hope that whatever weird trade dispute is going down gets resolved soon, so that this book that does and doesn't exist, this Schrodinger Schrodinger's book. situation we're in, yes, gets resolved. Yeah. Schrodinger's was, forest. Yeah, I was rather lucky that our local club held a one day on the weekend. And we managed to convince the guy I was running it to allow us to run the new book. <clears throat> so me and one of the other Silverneth guys um, got to play around with the new rules and test out some things, and it was good. Dreicher. Love her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. Yeah, she gets – That's a yeah. We'll talk about the Silverneth at some point. 
but uh, obviously whenever the book actually comes out. But yes, I agree on Dreisha. Uh, absolutely. Uh, okay. Uh, Tom, what about you, man? What are you working on? I saw, I saw a Fire Slayer in your hand repeatedly throughout this show, so I assume you're working on your Fire Slayers. Yeah, the long, slow, four-inch march through Hearthguard Berserkers. Like, they're just... There's so many of them. Uh, and so I'll get these 40 or so done soon. Maybe. I don't know. I've got all most of the, the first pass of free handing down. Um, all, and then I'm doing the hair, like all the layers on the hair. I forgot how many layers that I did on their hair. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, I'm an idiot. There's like 12 different or 10, 12, 14 different steps on the hair. Sure. And uh, it's a mistake. No, you know what you should do <laughs> just to be safe? Go like four or five more. Yeah, that's I what know. I would say. I uh, know. I hear that. Uh, but after, and then then I need to get all that done and do all the base coating on all the metals and everything, and then go back through and then redo all of the uh, touch ups on the like free handing uh, on like the skin lava pattern. So, but all of that, all of the initial lava patterning is done. All forty of them, which I'm excited for. So because the rest of the army doesn't have that, uh, because like I have another twenty or thirty oryx to do. Um, or a curse guard and they because they don't have the ward save i'm not doing the log pattern on them so sure no that's fine yeah so um yeah these guys are coming along i was afraid i wasn't gonna get it done i got to play with uh, contrast paints a little bit um i used it on like the uh the lava like the lava rocks that they're standing on i used the black contrast paint and that actually okay. like came out really nice um nice. i like the effect that it did um i had zenithaled it and it just like seeped right in and brought out all the uh, um, con contrast uh, of the rocks. So that went well. Um, and then I've been spending part of today putting together iron jaws. Um, yeah, for... boy, now we're talking. Oh, what is this? Suddenly you have, you before uh, you were talking about fire slayers. I'm not going to lie, I zoned out. But then all of a sudden <laughs> I heard the word iron jaws. I'm back on board. What's going on here? <laughs> uh, so uh, in... So when we went to pick up the, the contrast paints for my daughter, for her like Wanderers army that she's starting, um, we're doing uh, like they had all the minis out and they were showing all the paints. And so my son like, you know, grabbed one and started tinkering around on Stormcast. And he's like, hey, I want to do some painting. You know, what, what other minis do we have at home? And I was like, well, I mean, do you want to, you know, like, do you want to start another army? And so we're looking through and he saw the orcs and he's like, I want to do those. And so he's going to be painting up a uh, uh, Iron Jaws army. So he wanted to do the, like, he really liked the red, um, the Blood Angels red, which is like a super pigment rich red, like an outrageously pigment rich red. Right. And so uh, he's going to, red goes faster on some orcs um, and paint them up. So, uh, yeah, it'll be exciting. So uh, I was, put, um, was putting those together for him. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I, uh, I like that a lot. I, uh, I'm, I'm happy to see that. I like how you continue to skirt these ridiculous rules in your year of no new armies, quote unquote, where you're just <laughs> like, where you're making three different armies. that are all like, why? Well, I, I had most of that stuff already. That's not a new I, army. I got two I armies. Bought, for my, those are for my have, kids. Those don't no, count. But have I bought any new models? That's the key. Okay. I didn't buy any one. You have bought body. some new models. No, I haven't. I, I, the stuff that I bought new the mm -hmm. FEC, I flipped already. Like, I never actually opened any of that. I just sold it all. <laughs> and so, like, uh, I've, like, the Iron Jaws I already had. I decided not, to, I, they were on the selling docket. I decided not to sell them. Um, and the Wanderers, I, like, she's painting some Sisters of, uh, Sisters of uh, the Watch, or whatever the, yeah, whatever yeah. the old, uh, the old High Elf uh, models yeah. are. She's, she's painting those. Um, and so, no, I really haven't bought a new army. And I, at this point, like, I'm halfway done. I may make it out because I have Night Haunt already. And I'm planning on doing Night Haunt. Or I might do Swift Talk. Um, and, like, we were joking around about that. No, like, I'm, like, I have a really, really satisfying Swift Talk list. <laughs> so it might happen. That's all I'm saying. Well, I'm glad to hear it. And I'm glad to hear the charade continues. <laughs> no new armies, 2019. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it might as well be a meme at this point. Uh, okay. So the... Uh, um, I, I don't know what meme would fit that best. We might need like the 
the back and forth one, you know, between the dad and the son or whatever of like, I said, I'm not going to start any new armies. You've started five new armies. Those are all figures I already had, you know, like that back and forth me might be really good for that. Anyways, uh, for myself, my hobby time has been consumed still by the, the big project I'm working on. Uh, and I have more or less finished the, the second, uh, figure for that, Mm. which is her right here. Look at that leg. Yeah. So yes, this is uh obviously uh Shalaxi, uh who's gonna be going on a hunt for the previous figure. And you can see that like she's I, I tried to model her after I went back and watched the fight scene from Troy, where like sure. um where uh Brad Pitt is like running at the dude and kind of like uses the shield and yep. just like moves it aside and then stabs the with the spear. So I tried to model it off that for her like jumping off a rock and her shield will meet up with his axe you can see where she's like lit from below with the the orange like everything from below is hot including the shield and yeah, stuff it is. and <laughs> yes and uh that was an interesting noise i don't know what that was still going and it's gone okay sorry about that i don't know what just happened there uh and uh yeah so and like i tried to add a lot of movement to her you can see where like her bejangles and stuff are flying so this was like a lot of work carefully with the heat gun because i had to like bend her hair to be in motion right like her hair doesn't normally swoop like that right like everything on her had to be in motion see how like that hair is bent and the jangles are bent her cloak is bent up right like everything had to be moving like she was spinning around like this like she's coming in to stab like that direction so yeah so that's Shalaxi. It's so outrageous. Yeah. I had to reconstruct that leg isn't real, by the way. Like almost none of that <laughs> leg is real. Like I had to rebuild that from scratch. Maybe like this much of the leg from here down is real leg. And like most of this knee had to be, it was a lot of reconstructive surgery poor Shalaxi had to have uh, because the legs do not bend like that in any way, shape or form. And so much of this model isn't real. Cause it's meant to be like hidden by the cloak, right? Yeah. Like it's meant, there's like nothing back here. Cause it's meant to have this cloak on it. So I had to like reconstruct several parts and rebend her arms and all that. But yeah, I think she's, she's nice. I think she came out. Okay. Too many gems, too many stupid gems that I had to paint. Uh, but yeah, there you go. So that's her. Uh, so I'm, I'm disappointed. I'm, I thought oh? she was going to be, I thought she was going to be straddling the blood thruster. Uh, yeah. So interesting story about that. Like, cause that was obviously the art that inspired it originally. Right. Was yeah. that, that piece of art that I loved of Shalaxi, like on the blood thruster about ready to stab him. And so when I was first kind of getting the models out and positioning them, that was my thought. I, I wanted to actually make it like that. Now, right. First problem is that's not really as good for competition because the models entangled like that wouldn't be as as readable. Okay, sure. you generally want a more open, a more open image for for a competition piece. But also the art is wrong. All right, oh. what I mean by that is like the art. If you look at the art, Shalaxi herself is like the size of his torso. Okay, like she's not very big. Like her mm. scale is way different because the artist basically just drew it off of a description and needed to make it fit. And like the bloodthirster is back like this and her whole body is more or less on his torso. In reality, the Shalaxi that the keeper is taller than the bloodthirster. <laughs> She's bigger. So there was just no way to like actually condense her down enough to get her into the position. You know like, what I'm you saying? Couldn't, like, like you couldn't like, wrap her legs around him i i tried i did like i thought about that but like i i tried a couple different positions before obviously i had everything glued in and the issue is she would have still had to be almost fetal and then yeah. like her the problem is her arm even with cutting and shortening the spear her yeah. arm has would have to be like this to actually have that sure. position happen and it's just it would have looked completely whopper jawed so um Anyway, I, it was okay. I it, it drove me to the Troy idea because I went and looked up like you know fun duel fights in yep. in film and stuff and stumbled on that one. I was like, oh yeah, here you go. This this is what I want to build it off of. So, I I tried to make her match Brad Pitt's position in that movie and like at a moment or whatever. So, yeah, sure. uh, yeah, she could write. So acrylic chemist in the comments said, sounds like you need the the forge world bloodthirster. Yeah, that would work. He's probably big enough. She could she could mount up on him. 
That'd be all right. That'd be big an enough. opportunity. Sure. It's not the <clears> same <throat> bloodthirster from the art, though. Like, because I, I really tried to make everything look like the stuff in the art. Uh, so just, you know, whatever. Uh, okay. Uh, the, so that's hobby time. Let's talk about some GHB, shall we? Sure. All Sounds right. Good. <clears throat> GHB 2019. I mean, I don't know. I guess it was okay. Guys. Okay. Great. Okay. That's our show. Thanks everybody. That's the review. <laughs> Have a good time. See you next week. It's like not even subscribe. out yet. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> How do you know anything about this book? So obviously everybody and their brother has done a review show already. I love that we're like three days before the book's official release. And by all accounts, this is a late review, right? Uh, it's been an intense couple of days of reviews. And obviously a lot of the book's been spoiled. So, but let's start with from, from everything we've seen and we've heard and the reviews. I too have basically tried to consume every review I could in advance of this you know, sort of lay my hands on everything I could about the book. Uh, Dan, what's your overall feeling right now on the book? 40, sort of 40,000 foot view, as always, where we begin. What do you think overall? Um, as expected, um, some marginal or incremental changes around the edges for existing forces. Um, the main interest being what they're doing with the battle plans and the scenario maps and the impact that has um, interested more in the changes to the pitch battle rules in terms of scenery, command points, um, those aspects of the general's handbook than points. I don't think points are going to move the dial, particularly um, outside of a particular couple of exceptions. Um, and apart from that, we're waiting to see early July. I, I think you summed that up quite well. Tom? Your high level thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think I would agree with Dan that I think that uh, in general, the all the, the points changes were subtle. Um, uh, there are some exceptions, though. I think there's some very significant notable, notable exceptions on certain armies that uh, are exciting. Um, yeah. <laughs> the do you, uh, do you think those are lifts so, up or um, put down, as it were? So those, oh, li those lift lifts up like i i think that i mean the only real put down that i saw that was like egregious to me was dispossessed like i just i i can't even um okay but it's all uh, those mixed order lists that you got to worry about <laughs> right like who would run mixed order lists with warriors in it? it's ridiculous um year after year literally i don't like that that happens I do I, not know I, what that is. It's not me. Um, we can blame Dan. He's the only new thing. <laughs> uh, literally, um, year on year, uh, whatever I'm playing, the next General's Handbook gets hit in the face with the Nerf bat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it did, did, by the way, it, it, does everybody else he, like? Has everybody else heard that like weird ch -ch 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 thing twice? People put in the comments. Tell me if you heard that or if it's just us who heard that. I don't know why it happened. So, but anyways, Felix, continue, yeah. Tom. I, anyways, I don't. Uh, <laughs> okay, so it's totally you then. Um, no, uh, we. Uh, so, other than a couple adjustments, um, I think a lot of them were adjustments down, which is really exciting. Um, and we'll talk about those, obviously. Uh, I the scenarios really caught me off guard with the uh, the the directional changes. Um, I think from a balance standpoint, I'm very excited for that from a, um, from a like event organizer standpoint, I dread the new reality that a lot of these people have, um, because of like so many of the battles now are like end to end, yeah. like a significant, and like, that's a real problem for some events from a space standpoint. Sure. It's, um, it's a better, it's, it's an ironic situation because it's often way better for the scenario, like taken in the void, right? If, yep. if the scenario is considered in the void, it actually makes the scenario play a lot better. The right. reality of how we have tables set up at events means that it, it becomes more challenging. So, you yep. know, yeah, we'll talk Which about, is, we're going to talk about scenarios today in detail. So, but I like, but all that said, I, I like, I like the changes. Um, I think that they, uh, I like the light touch on factions. Um, 
And I like the direction of most of the endless spells. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So I would agree with everything both of you said. My I, I think that my overall forty thousand foot view would was it's mostly positive. I'll talk about the nate well, we'll talk about sort of the nature of points in a moment. Um, but I that is to say I don't disagree with the vast majority of moves. Some of them could have been maybe slightly more aggressive. We can talk about point shifting and the theories on that here in a second. Um, because we're gonna we're gonna deep dive on points tonight. So so everybody understands what part one is gonna contain. We're gonna talk about points. We're going to talk about allegiance abilities. We're going to talk about uh, scenarios and stuff like that, because those are, I think, uh, the, the three interesting things that will jump out from a sort of match play perspective. In future shows, I want to make sure we cover, especially like I want to do a lot of a deep dive on meeting engagements and uh, on new terrain stuff and everything like that. Um, part of the problem with really going deep on terrain right now is that we're waiting for the FAQ, uh, which we can talk about that in a moment. But um, the... My view of this is it did about what I expected. And I liked most of the points. And I liked almost everything done with the scenarios. You know, tournament challenges exempted. Who cares? I don't care. If the scenario plays better, I'd still rather it get designed better. Right? Yeah. Like, that's that's yeah. just the reality of the thing. Now, that doesn't mean it's the only solution. We can also uh, we can also admit of the realities of tables and and make sure we try to find other solutions, too. So both can be true. Uh, and I liked, you know, a lot of what was in there. Um, so, but all of this hinges. So, uh, you know, somebody, uh, uh, Mr. Mephisto on Twitter was asking about, you know, is it going to be salt or sunshine? It's mostly sunshine. Um, but as it they, always is with the events, I mean, I'm a fairly positive guy because I've played the game for more than 20 years. And let me tell you what. There have been far darker times. Okay. Don't tell me of the darkness. All right. Like I was, I was born in it and shaped by it. You know what I mean? Like you, you came to the darkness as an adult. All right. Uh, like you can pick Bane at, or you can pick the lion from the lion, the witch in the wardrobe. Like, don't tell me of the old magic. I was there at its founding. Uh, <laughs> either one of those, like, the reality is, is that this is all the best it's ever been just because it's not perfect. Let's not lose perspective here. Um, but at any rate, so yes, I am mostly positive. Um, that doesn't mean things can't be better. They can certainly be better. That's one of the things we're going to talk about. Um, but all of this hinges on what happens in two weeks. Yep. Um, because if what happens in two weeks, three weeks, whatever the, whatever the time is, right? Um, if, if, if this, so let's just frame what's happening right now with the GHB, these points and stuff were basically locked, like, and basically set, let's call it early in 2019. I don't want to get an argument over exactly when, but let's just say that's when it happened. Okay. Fair enough. Yep. Right. We don't need the exact day. That's when sometime early in 2019. Like, I know when calls for public points, there was various public reviews and these things ended. And then obviously there would have been internal processes to collate and review everything. And then here we go. Um, and the, uh, the book speaks to that. And then in a couple weeks, we're going to get a PDF. I think they said it releases with the FAQ. So let's call it, what, three weeks from now, probably? Seem like a fair estimate. I know they normally are on a two week cycle, but they this said is early point. July. Right. So yeah. er, early July, we end up, uh, uh, we end up with the, this PDF that's going to, uh, adjust the points for all the new books, uh, basically everything except fire slayers and Slanesh, right? I think those two are well, still post this or. I mean, fire slayers said, like they said on the Facebook page that Fire Slayers were still there. Um, I don't know what to make of that. Okay. Um, whatever. So that's I've fine. heard it both I, ways, is the point. Slanesh isn't in there. So somewhere there's a stopping point, but whatever. FEC and Skaven are. Yeah. And, and uh, Gloom Spite. Yeah. Gloom Spite's in there. Sure. I mean, one would hope that they actually get some positive adjustments because there's a lot of things you could do with Gloom yes. Spite with points that could make some things really good. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Bring so, those spiders on down. Yeah, sure. Bring them on down, baby. So, yeah. So, I guess fire slayers are in there. 
Um, but at any rate, there's there's plenty of things we can do. And and one would hope that those adjustments go beyond points. In fact, let me say it this way. Yeah. To me, the success of this GHB in this current meta is in I'll 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 just be frank, right? Uh we need to kneecap Skaven in FEC. Like somebody's gotta we have got to get a Tanya Harding situation going here. <laughs> right? Because otherwise, like we've got a problem. And and would my here, be, here otherwise is, bitch be crazy? Like is that, like, is that my argument here? My argument is this. If we go back to the beginning of the year, if we can all remember back to before Skaven and FEC released, I know it seems like forever ago. Right. Um we were and, happy about Gloom's fight. We, well, we were happy about generally the state of the meta. The meta was quite competitive. Yeah. When you would look at like top 10s, top 15s, there was a lot of different stuff that was rotating up and down and through, right? right? It was a very open and competitive thing. Yeah, Doc was still too high. Like it was statistically too high. No disagreement. Yep. I, I remember yep. my history too. Okay. And, you know, that like, sure. And theoretically what just happened with Doc with some points adjustments, which we'll talk might have addressed that, might have not. I don't know. But things just changed some. Maybe it addresses it, maybe it doesn't. We can have, you know, a discussion about that. But my argument is if we kneecap those two idiots, okay, and return sure. back to that time, if we reset yeah. back to there, we're actually in a pretty good place. I, I would think uh, that the meta would become pretty decent again. Those two have been have cratered the meta, basically, right? And if we just whack them down, uh, we'll, you know, probably be in a pretty decent place. Uh, LLV said the meta pre FEC and Skaven was much more varied. And if LLV says it, I, he actually tends to back up his claims with statistics. So I will trust the man. And by the way, to, to like, to address a previous thing that was going on in the comments, I'm not giving AOS a pass when things are bad. I am saying, this is good. It was much worse. We are on a positive trajectory, but I will still call bad things bad. Okay. Well, and and to put a pin on this, yeah, he just said you need to whack two books in the knees, right? In yeah, a like, violent assault manner. Yeah, like I think I'm being pretty straight here. Okay, <laughs> like and if those books, and by the way, I think the adjustments in those books go beyond points. Like we need to see changes. You cannot fix those two books on points alone. Or if you do, it's going to look, I, it's good. That's going to be, that's going to go pear shaped. Are okay? you, uh, are you, are you still of the uh, mindset Vince for rewriting uh war, uh, war lightning? Or yeah. The, war, the rat trap you know, needs to be rewritten completely. <laughs> yes. And, and like, look, you want to solve with points. Great. Make it like 400 points. <laughs> and so no, seriously. So just no one ever plays it. Unmake it by making it a stupid. And that's just yeah. not fun. That's dumb. Nice. Right? Like, that doesn't help anybody. Just rewrite it and make it, like, an actual playable thing. Okay? It's... Just do that. I mean... You know you it, need to do that. Rewrite it, that. Rewrite Gristle Gore. And, and then make sure we do the appropriate points adjustments to the rest of Skaven. Most of Skaven's problems aren't... are actually in points. Rat Trap aside, most of Skaven's problems are in points. They need some rather aggressive points attention. And I mean pretty aggressive. <clears throat> <laughs> what do you think the actual prospect is that we will see the worst offenders get rewritten rules? What? What? How likely do I think that is? Yeah, I would hope pretty likely. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'll I'll coin flip it fifty fifty shot right now. I don't know, and I wish they would just say. Yeah, I would too, because you look at prior examples and you go, "What well, we've got Thunder or War Scroll change." Um, which is a combination of concern about balance and their desire to match boxes with um, or match war scrolls with the boxes that the models come from. Um, you've got Portal Croak getting rewritten. Yeah, um, sure. FAQ. Yep. But you don't have that many other examples of um, sort of rewritten by FAQ or designer commentary. Trying to think of others. Yeah, I mean, there are some others. You're right; it doesn't happen super often. But ultimately, what are we, what am I asking to be rewritten here? Gristle Gore, a non-war scroll, you know, page, right? Um, 
and uh and and one war scroll out of Skaven. Yeah. I don't think I'm asking to move the world here. I didn't say rewrite those whole books. I think most of the rest of the stuff you can address with points. And by the way, it would be how great. How do you to rewrite? Address... How do you rewrite Gosselor? In this case, just take them out of the activation wars and or give them a new command ability that doesn't let them swing twice. Do one of the two things. Like do you want to have a do you want to, do we want to have a quick talk about the activation wars? Sure. Sure. Okay. So let's talk because I, I I had a sort of realization about the active the activation wars this week. Yep. Um, we've been looking at a symptom and calling it the disease. Okay. Okay. The activation wars aren't real. What I mean by that is like the ability for things to strike first in combat. That that thing taken in alone in the void is not the problem. Uh, so let me guess. It's uh, because did you read? It was from was it from the post on TGA on no, the feedback? I okay. didn't. I didn't read anything of it. This just this just okay. kind of occurred to me in a void. Okay. Actually, I take it back. It just it occurred to me in a discussion with Tyler Emerson. He and I were talking, okay. and this is where I stumbled upon this. So the idea that something has the ability to strike first is not is not in itself a problem. Okay, like there's nothing wrong about that being part of the game. If Swift Hawk Agent Chariots struck first, sure. If that was just a rule that Swift Hawk Agent Chariots had, the problem is the combination. Like anything, the problem with the Gristle Gore General is just a mag and and in its place in Strike First is the same problem as what happened with Hagnar, and the same problem as what happens with all these things. We 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 label it as this activation wars problem, but like Eidneth existed with a whole turn, their whole army striking first for a turn for a long time and nobody really like lost their complete minds and Ineth didn't rule the tables they didn't put up an FEC level stats right mm -hmm. um my argument would would be that the when you take the gristle gore general imagine it, let's let's do a thought experiment imagine the 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 ghoul lord on terrorgeist imagine the kumquat only had the ability to strike first he did not have an ability to pile in twice he did not have an ability to fight after death he did not have an ability to trigger six mortal wounds on a bite. He did not have an ability to reroll the hits on that bite. He did not fly. He did not fly almost 20 inches. Okay? Yep. If if he was like some walking dummy or he only flew eight inches or something, right? And had none of the rest of that stuff, right? Yep. He wouldn't be the absolute kill machine he is. The problem is he is all those things. He is this yep. thing that can... Strike first, strike first twice, make his buddy strike twice, strike even if you kill him first somehow, do six mortal wound bites, reroll the hits to fish for those six mortal wound bites, fly and hit you from the other side of the table, right? With spells, oh, sorry, with also with spells that easily buff those attacks and heal him if he actually gets himself into any amount of trouble, right? And so the... And by the way, by the way, comments, I disagree completely with the Slanesh thing, but I'll leave that for another show. Um, the, <laughs> the, uh, the, the, but I, I understand your opinion. I just don't agree. At any rate, it's a stacking problem. I agree. Slanesh needs to be fixed too. Continue. It's, that's fine. The people of reasonable estimation can have a, a disagreement about this. Um, the, uh, so my argument is it's not that. It's not the activation wars of the problem. People having the ability to go first. It's we introduced this thing and then we slapped it on things where you can do it and stack and stack and stack and stack and stock and block and all day about just nonsense, right? Uh, where all of a sudden this thing has just a, a, just a truckload of abilities it's backing up that are now happening uninteractively, right? The enabler, the catalyst is the, is the strike first. But it's just a symptom. If it was all it was, it wouldn't be a problem, right? Um, well, and I would argue that it, it, yes, and it's also what we're putting this on. And so, like putting strikes first on a chariot, a, a Swift Talk agent chariot, is of a different world as putting it on uh, a four hundred and forty point unit or a six hundred point uh, thirty man Volkite berserker unit. Like that's what we're talking about here is is it's putting it on these Death Stars that yeah, sure. can that can punch way above their weight. Right. The Hearthguard Berserkers are a similar problem, right? Where like 
you do this yeah, and you do mortal wounds and you can be nearly invulnerable and, 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 and. If yes. I have to say and eight times in describing your abilities and one of those things is, is strikes first, it's the same stacking problem. Hagnar alone, like just witches alone aren't, <laughs> aren't a problematic unit. Witches who can stack up to outrageous offense, you know, and get mind razored and get witch brood and get blessing of Cain and become like offensive or sorry, offense and defensive nightmares. That's when things went off the rails, right? When you can combine too many things at once. Um, so yeah, at any rate, Dan, what do you, what do you think about that? That thought? I agree. <laughs> It's cool. as simple as that. Right? It's the it's a simple thing. It's the it's not the activation mechanic in isolation. It's the combination of that plus everything else. So I like that they when they first introduced sort of the activation mechanic. I liked it. It's like you're playing with new rule spaces. You're going right. Okay. Well, we're going to strike first, or we're going to make you strike last. It's uh, back to those those mechanics and, and seeing new ways of playing and giving you something new to think about. But is that combined with everything else, which leads to uh, not fun? Yeah, exactly. And I think each of these, each of these sort of examples in the activation wars have their own problems, right? Like, and, and by the way, like, I'm not saying hearth guard berserkers are as bad as the, the GG general. I don't, I don't think they are either uh, because they I, don't have the, don't they don't have the so. flight. They don't have the reach. I, I think you just need to leave them alone. Sure. My, my point is, is that you're you're like people who said that in the comments, like LLV. I agree with you, LLV. Like that's why I listed the flight and the ability to like shoot across the board and jump chaff and have a basically a six inch threat range as being one of the Gristle Gore General's positives, right? One of the stacking problems he has. Something the Fire Slayers are notably missing with their little tiny stunty legs. Like if the the Bloodthirster thing is another example, right? In corn, where it's like, well. If just one bloodthirster was striking first and that's it and it was just him and he could just jump in and fight once, I don't know that I'd care that much if it was like one bloodthirster in the army doing this. Because bloodthirsters alone, like one bloodthirster is not the scariest thing in the world. When he drags his buddies into combat with him and suddenly it's like three bloodthirsters all fighting. Like, again, why? Why did we need to, like, stack on this mechanic, right? Why aren't you fighting? Yeah, it's like if if we had just stopped at at that mechanic... And not put 10 other things on top of it. And somebody in the comments just asked, what's the best way to prevent stacking? Stop writing it into the rules. Oftentimes these are occurring <laughs> in, like these are occurring in things that should have been completely predictable, right? Like yeah. you knew when you wrote Gristle Gore that you wrote the general has this command trait and then you hand it in that command ability. They're in the same thing. That's not even like unintentional stacking yeah. where you forgot it like combined with some obscure rule. Like you yeah, wrote them in the same this. page. Yeah. Don't do that. I don't know what else to say. Like yeah. his command ability could have just been like re-rolls to wound or something. You know, like whatever. Could have been anything. You know what you did. Yeah, so uh <laughs> there you go. So that's that's my argument. Like we we talk a lot about participation in this stuff and in this activation wars. And my argument is it's, it's a misattribution. I'm not saying that like, I'm saying that this, the going first thing isn't as much of a problem. It's a, a uh, it's an interesting, it's an interesting, but powerful game design element. It needs to be respected like fire used properly. So I would argue I'd net do where like, yeah, the whole army can do it, but they can only do it in this one turn. It's predictable. You can see it coming. You can play to it. It becomes an interesting element of an army. That's fire. That's used well. That's heating your house or cooking your food, right? Gristle gore is what happens when the, the forest catches and you burn a, several thousand acres of, uh, of, of you know, redwood out in California. That's gristle gore. So, at any rate. Um, okay. Um, and, yeah. So, at any rate, my, uh, my argument would be, because of things like that, there needs to be actual rules changes. What's the likelihood of it? I don't know. I hope it happens. That's my argument because trying to yeah. fix that stuff through points is just, it's not, I've got a headache. Satisfying. I, I have a headache. Cool. Let me get out the bone saw. Whoa, wrong tool, right? Like that is not, that, that is a tool that you can solve some problems with, not this problem. So without, you're going to, you're going <laughs> to, you're going to lose a lot more than, than you're solving would be my argument. So. Yeah, we've you've talked numerous times in the past about the limitations of points. 
and we all know what you can do with points and point to a blunt instrument. And so really for some of these things, it's a really good one. Yeah, you're drawing your pad in the there you go yeah your your cat was on your microphone and it was really loud like yes. so, so loud it is we have, we've identified the problem it's grumpy cat um, grumpy cat did thought. it to be fair to the cat wow okay so sorry <laughs> <laughs> that was unexpected. Okay. I could not mute you fast enough, Dan. I was like it's reaching not my fault. for it. That it's was not, not Tom's fault. Yeah, that was that was that sound is what Gristle Gore sounds like in my head. There you go. Yeah, that's somebody said that in the comments. I agree. Okay. Sorry, mm -hmm. everyone. Thank you. Yeah. I apologize. All right. Okay. All right. At any rate, no problem, Dan. I it was your it was a cute cat. It's a cute cat. <laughs> I know it didn't mean to make the devil come out of your microphone. <laughs> uh, at least I've now learned where my microphone is on my laptop, so that's uh, that's that's useful. Um, cool. Um, <laughs> moving, moving on, how do you want to tackle um, the things that we're going to tackle? Yeah, in the handbook. Let's actually talk about the handbook, shall we? <laughs> Not this other stuff that's coming up. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's get into this. And I thought we would go by alliance. We can talk about the points and the faction abilities if they're in the book. Does that sound like a reasonable way to start? So we can kind of, we'll go by alliance and then we'll cover the factions. And we talk about what happens in them. Uh, we're not going to go blow by blow every single point adjustment, but we'll we'll talk about some that we think are relevant. And if, if we hit a faction that has faction abilities in the book, we can talk about those. Sound good? Sure. Okay. Seems like a good framing device. Uh, all right. So as we move forward, all waiting for the next two to three weeks on bated breath for that PDF, let's talk about what is in this book, which is a lot of fun things. Uh, all right. So shall we start with... Uh, actually, you know what? Let's start with something a bit not in any of the alliances. You want to start with endless spells? You want to start from the bottom yeah. up? Let's, let's end the spells. Yeah. Started from yeah. the bottom, now I'm here. All right. So fun stuff. Uh, Dan, what endless spell points adjustments caught your attention and what excites you and what, what, you know, just, what do you think generally about the endless spell point movement? Uh, some interesting changes in there. So the sort of big drops and my spreadsheet is just not working. Um, but the, the sort of biggest drops, which have caught the most attention, purple sun dropping from 100 to 50. So people other than, um, those named Ash are actually going to use it. Um, we've seen a decrease in gnashing jaws as well. Um, so you might see that some more in relation to Legion of Grief anti-bravery lists combined with Purple Sun um, and some of the other things. Um, and then minor drops for Grave Tide, Life Swarm, Burning Head, things that you didn't really see much of. Um, Maelstrom down to 10 points. I'm excited so, about that one. That was I'm so <laughs> excited. Yeah, at 10 points. I'm like, finally, I might fit that thing in a list. Yeah, Wait, 10 well, points. Like, like, let's talk about this. <laughs> I actually think it's a really good spell in lists where you don't have a lot of spells. Sure. If you're not relying on magic, basically, you're saying. Right, yeah. right. Because, like, I can imagine a world where I throw that out and just get free unbinds against Nagash at every at every spell I throw two dice. Sure. Like, yeah, I'll take that. For, for 10, 10 points. points. Right, yeah. exactly. If I had yeah. no other great designs on my magic anyways, right? If I'm basically right. bringing the sort of the traditional, like, quote-unquote scroll caddy wizard, yeah. well, then why the heck not, right? Sure. Wheel that bad boy out there, and then it's just more kind of dispelling potential. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm playing Zinch. Awesome. Here is my anti uh, fate point uh, summoning, you know, tool. Sure. Have a, have a maelstrom and, you know, throw dice to try to stop some of those spells. Yeah. Yeah. And then in terms of increases, we've seen increases to all the things that you would have expected. So all the popular endless spells. So pendulum up slightly. Geminids and cogs both up 20. Oh. Um, 
reflects that they're probably the most popular one. Um, shackles also up 20. Yep. Yeah, I'm I'm happy about the shackles moving up. 20 was always just a ridiculous steal for those. Even at 40, honestly, they might be a little just a little bit low. Like I if I if they were at 50, I would feel better about them. I think we need to like I think we need to to sort of You're price. Out of your mind. I think we need to no look, I think we need to price things that are like high movement penalties a little higher in sort of the way we weight things. Just because yeah. they tend to like just utterly destroy certain armies that can't escape them. And I understand now more people have more abilities. Sure. You could lunchbox the boatman, your people out of the way. I get it. But nonetheless, like, you know, it, it's, that's a very unfun and often crippling effect. Movement is the, look, is movement one of the most important things in the game, Tom? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. <laughs> then the thing that stops movement and, or, and, or crushes it, should be the costliest debuff, right? Yeah. It's a pretty simple equation. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, I, that, like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fight you with that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that that's the simplest I can explain it. Um I love that life swarm went down to 50 points. Like, no, keep trying. <laughs> Move that down to 10. Now we have then we might have some gas <laughs> in the engine. Like I wouldn't buy I wouldn't play that thing at 50. I wouldn't play it at 40. I wouldn't play it at 30. Keep going. Like uh, you know, let's I, I name that tune in 10 points. That's it. That's well, all I'm picking that thing like, up for. I don't I don't like the only thing that was really enticing for me originally when it existed was the uh um, like when Volkite Berserkers needed to be under or over a certain model count for their award save. Sure. Uh, but that's not a thing anymore. <laughs> right. So like, I see that and I'm like, nah. No, okay. I mean, and the fact that it's like predatory even and other people can take control of it to heal their models. No, <laughs> like just no, ever. It's, it's no, no. That's I, I like I value healing too, but healing is. Of healing is 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 in general kind of pointed weird in this game. Anyway, I'm excited about Purple Sun at 50. That's super sweet. I think the portal going up's good. Again, wow. you could probably move it up to 80, and I'd still think people would would play it, which says a lot. Cog sitting at 80 feels apropos. For the most part, uh, I'm I'm actually pretty happy. BS. I think 60. It I think Cogs was costly. Um, I don't know that it should have changed, especially because it benefits the enemy. Um. Well, it doesn't uh, have to benefit the enemy. Sure, sure, sure. That's yeah. true. Uh, certainly. Um, I think uh, I'm excited about uh, Purple Sun. Let me just say that. I've really been wanting to run my uh, Gloom Spite Sun and Moon list. Oh, sure. Um, yeah, yeah. And now, like, it's viable. <laughs> the points are down near, like, semi-tentative. Um, I, I just want to see who's going to run the Zinch list and throw Purple Sun in there now and have Kairos in the list. And then use Kairos to like switch the purple sun die to a six to instant kill a character, basically. Or you know what I'm saying? Like to to get that well, free 2d6 mortals on a character. And that purple sun's doing everything they want because they want to run it over their horrors and give them summoning points. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's that's what I'm saying. It's it's a great pickup for them, right? And like Kairos can once a game when it moves over a character, just be like, Well, you're dead. I mean, very likely. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, so I, I just I was thinking I, I had a little fun thought experiment of all the fun things in the in the current game that Kairos yeah. can affect with that that Master of Fate or whatever it's called thing, and yeah, that was uh, that was one of them that occurred to me. Poor like fi Fire Slayer Standard Bears or whatever. Whoop, <laughs> gone. Yeah. Uh, go think, ahead. I was just going to say it'd be interesting to see whether this is just another step on the road to bravery and bravery mechanics being more relevant than they have been like it's something that we've seen over several iterations of the general's handbook and books that there's been this push for bravery bomb armies or armies which are going to take advantage of bravery mechanics um and we've never seen any of them on the table really we've never seen an army that relies on blowing the other people off through bravery and yeah. it drops plus legion of grief plus some other changes you might see it a little bit more. <laughs> it's I mean, probably there's still so much Battleshock immunity in the game and probably always will be. And like, yeah, there's some downward pressure on things like command points. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things we should mention is that you're capped at buying one command point now for, for, 
you know, 50 points. Basically, you can't like leave your list at 1800 and buy four command points. You can only buy one. Um, so, you know, like, yeah, that's some downward pressure on command points. Uh, theoretically, if you use mercenaries, you lose at command point, you know, whatever. So there's, there's some pressure on it, but there are other opportunity costs now because there are new command abilities, right? The ability to sort of reroll your hits when you're, you know, in melee and shooting and reroll your saves of one and so on and so forth. Um, so, you know, um, oh yes. And Sean Clark says, and you buy them so they don't contribute to triumphs. Yes. Excellent. Also, thank you, Sean. That's a gr also a great point. Yes. You do have to buy them. Um, as you don't just get them for being down those points, or whatever. Um, but, uh, you know, but it's still so easy to, to be Battleshock immune often, especially a lot of the horde armies you would want to bravery bomb often have lots of ways to mitigate it, right? So, like, Gloom Spite have 82,000 command points still in any world they want to live in, right? And they're getting, There's like... nothing to do with them. They're just, they're just in the club, just throwing command points around, just who cares? That army now basically has universal reroll hits and saves of one, and, and you know, just whatever, like, all the time, and it's Battleshock immune. Uh, and Skaven are largely Battleshock immune. Uh, it just, and so on and so forth, right? Like, there's lots of examples like that. Mm -hmm. So, I'm not sure that it would ever move the needle. It actually tends to hit, like, the mid-range forces the best, or the worst, right? Armies who have, like, who pack five to ten guys in a unit at, like, Bravery 7. Yeah. <laughs> They're the ones that are the most likely to eat it on that kind of Bravery bombing stuff. Um, so take that, Stormcast. You're worse again. Uh, as always. All right, cool. That's Endless Spells. Uh, all in all, good. I was happy with everything I saw there. Keep going on Life Swarm. You can get there eventually. Get it down to 30 and people will play it. That's what I'll say. Uh, I like the Gnashing Jaws at 30 just because it's a ridiculously giant base. So that's kind of fun. Right? Yes. Okay. Nice. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's just kind of an interesting thing that blocks space up, but whatever. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. So, oh yes, as Haywo just pointed out, Purple Sun is also an interesting uh, counter to like to Hearthguard or whatever if they don't have their uh, or yeah, just an interesting counter because it's slain, right? So yeah, but uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. So shall we start with chaos, gentlemen? Shall we start with the forces of chaos? <laughs> Sound good? Sure. All right, cool. Beasts of chaos are the top of the list. Uh, okay. So beasts, interesting things that happened here. Obviously gores went down, uh, slightly, not really as much when you think of the sort of horde bonus, they only dropped like 10 points, right? At the, at the horde buy-in bonus, but they dropped 10 per. So they're like 70 instead of 80, but it's, is it still 200 for the whole pack? Is that right? I think that's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, Somehow, the Chaos Gargant went up. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> the Zangor Shaman went down. The Razor Gore went up. It's fine. Uh, you know, and... Uh, the And obviously, Enlightened went up slightly, right? Uh, Enlightened yeah. went up to, what, 160, right? Yeah. Yeah. Fair. That's fine. I like that touch on Enlightened. I didn't think they needed to go up that much more. And then as far as spells, all of their all of their endless spells went down, uh, which to me the actual story there is Dirgehorn at 50, still not interesting. Ravenwing Direflock at 30, still not interesting. Keep going. Uh, as Haywo pointed out, real missed opportunity not to make it five points that it might have been interesting. Uh, but the Doomfire <laughs> Taurus at 80... That's actually kind of interesting. That thing is quite destructive. Causes always strikes last. All right. I'm interested. Okay. No. I, you know I'm who's excited about that? <laughs> Sorry, Dan. Go ahead. Okay. I go ahead, Dan. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Taurus. Um, having seen the range, the size of the base, the number of units that you can impact. Um and yeah, it's perfect setup for if you then want to charge enlightened into something, um, and you might have a double turn um, because it's going to impact between. So you get you you put your opponents in the choice of well, 
do you want to take the turn um, and then strike last against me, or do you want to give me the turn um, and move it away from your key units so your units might have a chance to survive before they get hit with enlightened? <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Um, it's it's a good spell. It's a it's a it's a I think a pretty darn good endless spell at eighty. Especially when you look at now what else is 80, right? You look at things like cogs at 80 and stuff like that. That suddenly feels like it's in a pretty good space. I think that's pretty yeah. solid. Um, who really benefits from that is Zinch. Because, <laughs> yeah. <Yep>. because <laughs> uh, uh, they can run their crazy caster uh, unit or like army and then throw a shaman in there and now gets always strikes last. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, yeah, I, so when, when we're talking about each of these factions, we should talk about whether we like what we think is good. We should also talk about missed opportunities. Did you see any missed opportunities in this faction? Like, what would you, what do you think were the missed opportunities here from a points perspective? We're not going to talk about like things that would have needed War Scroll rewrites. Like, the Saigor isn't always going to be junk until they rewrite the War Scroll. There's no saving that guy. That guy's worth like 40 points, and you're not going to point that thing at 40 points. So, yeah. whatever. Just leave him in the, he, he, he's relegated to the ash bin of history, and that's fine. Yeah. Um. Things like Dragon Ogres um, could have done with a bit of a drop. Um, just trying to think of units in that book, which are ones that you might possibly consider given that you've got the option of taking Enlightened. Um, yeah, to me, it's like Dragon <laughs> Ogres and Bulgors, right? Those are the ones that felt like they could have come down 10, 20 yeah. points and, and still and been interesting choices. You know, Bulgors especially being a, a particular favorite of mine. I've always loved them. I think they're really cool models, but they're so swingy. They're so they're so made of paper. Right, they're very easy to remove. They're very easy to get to get gibbed. Um, so I think that would have been a that's. I think there was an opportunity there to make them an interesting choice if they had come down some. Didn't need huge, just a small drop. And I think that would have been. I think that's a missed opportunity there, um, because I, I I I think that that would be a valuable change, as it were. So yeah, any I can't think of really Tom anything else out of beasts you felt was missed. Or any missed other missed opportunities? I don't care about East. Sure, I would like to see the Gorgon come down. I, I think he could sure. be playable at a certain points value. There is like probably a somewhat reasonable points value he's kind of interesting at. It's a lot the heck lower than it is right now, but it's actually a number yeah. that could exist, right? Like I said, the Cygor is just always junk because his primary thing is just an attack that doesn't matter and will never matter. But like the Gorgon's a decent enough melee monster if he was like 120 points, and that's like whatever. There are 120 point monsters. I still don't know if he'd be picked, but he'd at least be like kind of interesting sometimes. So, you know, there you go. Okay. Right on. Uh, Blades of Corn, we're skipping because that's for the PDF. Uh, <laughs> the Soul Grinder came down 10 points from 260 to 250. I'm not really sure who's lining up on that one, but. Uh, Do you know what needs to change to make the Soul Grinder playable? A better model. No, I don't care about the model. It's fine. I like the model. The base. <laughs> like, it's got to get off that base. The problem is they made it too big because it's on that 160 mil. It's on the Maw Crush's pie plate. As long as it's on that, it's unplayable. Like, get out of here. That's it's insanity. I'm not... There's no way that thing earns that base. It just... It can't. It's going to get stuck. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be like the scene in Austin Powers. <laughs> <laughs> like, stop it. Move it to a different base somehow. <laughs> Make it, like, stand up on its legs like a scared spider in a cartoon. Whoop! So it fits on, like, a, a normal chariot base. Maybe. Maybe. You're fine. Okay. So, yeah, I, I love I love the model, but, like, it just... That base makes it absolutely unplayable. Okay. Let's talk about what I think is one of the big winners of this, which is the Disciples of Zinch. Uh, who got a bunch of much needed adjustments, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like a lot of things dropped by 10 and 20 points. Whatever, there we go. You know, like I don't, we don't need to get into the specifics, but I'll, I'll turn, Tom, I know you have a lot of love for this army. So do you want to talk about some of the points you think were, were relevant yeah. here in the drops? Yeah. I mean, I think that any, like all of the horror. That happened again. Drops. Dan. Um. <laughs> There is no in this room. <laughs> uh, just something that happens every so often. Go ahead. 
Uh, no, I think that the horror drops are nice. Um, I think that that makes all of them uh, valuable. Uh, Gaunt Summoner coming down 20 surprised me a little bit, um, especially given he's a double caster. But it looks like we've lost the uh, the the scroll with the familiars, so that I can understand that then. Um, uh, flamers at 140. Come on, guys. Um, I, I like them, but I'm still not playing them at 140. Um, <laughs> keep going. Keep going. Uh, Again, exalted... there is there is like some point value that those are actually reasonable at. Right. 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 Yeah. Like yes. Yeah. And and like again, I like them. Don't get me wrong. Like. I just, when I look at everything else that's competing for that spot, 140 is not going to cut it on flamers. No. Given like um, their wounds, their toughness, and what they actually do with their shooting. By the way, I don't think it's even that far off. We're not, right. I'm not talking about like cutting them to 60 points or something. No, 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 no. Like yeah. 130, 120. And we're like, we're in a different ballgame. Probably 120, I would be fielding them in a lot of my armies. So again, One we're not, we're not. So what was that? Of one of our strong uh, local players who's regularly winning events or um, taking top places on the rankings. Um, he's looking at DOT again, in particular in relation to Flamers, um, even at 140. Um, Flamers and Exalted Flamers and an Overseer's um, Battalion and playing around with Fate Dice um, and taking some advantages of that. Now, how whether we see that... Um, actually having legs in the end or whether people just stick with change host and the movement and control that change host gives you. Um, we will see. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think go ahead. Go ahead Tom. Uh, mobility wins the game and any, like, who was I talking to? I was trying to, Oh, sorry to people in the discussion about night haunt versus Legion of grief. And they were saying that like Legion of grief is so much better. Night haunt us so much, but yeah, but it's night haunt is mobility and people are pushing back and be like, that's worthless. Well, Mobility is going to win you more games than graveyards are. Like at the end of the day, if you look at the things that actually win games, mobility wins games. Change host is the king of mobility. Like it, it just is. Anytime that you get to pick up and redeploy units every turn, that's kind of a big deal. Um, and so I, uh, I don't see uh, change hosts moving away anytime soon. In fact, I see it coming back pretty strong. Yeah. Yeah, like on the whole, they were pretty moderate adjustments here. Like there was no move larger than 20 points down, right? This is a pretty moderate adjustment, but it felt like a pretty good adjustment. I think if yeah. Flamers came down, were a little more aggressive, they could have been an interesting competing choice, uh, especially in a meta that seems thirsty for shooting. But yep. nonetheless, uh, on the most part, yep, fine. Like good. We're pretty much like, I think, I think, I have thought Zinch has actually had some potential for a while that people were starting to explore. We saw that a couple of times. Uh, beyond just enlightened by the way on disc yep. um but like now i think we'll definitely see them being really interesting again this is another reason we're going to talk about many reasons why i hope for a sort of a reset in meta to like the beginning of the year by by kneecapping those two factions because i think it would be an even more interesting version because i think dots back in that mix right and arguably yep. they weren't in the stats before so cool right on were there any were there any other missed opportunities we haven't touched on yet Anything else I mean, out of there, Dan, that you didn't see or Tom that you didn't see that you thought you might want to see? I could have seen the Lord of Changes come down 20 points. That's just me. Okay. Yeah. Well, since three, been, right, you've, got, you've got Lord of Change is still quite expensive. Portal's gone up. Are you going to take a Lord of Change, which might sit at the back of the board and not do something first turn? Yeah. Um, and get Arkanaut Company to the face? Um, like. One can only hope. That's a, that's the appropriate <laughs> end for the chicken, getting shot by dwarves. Yes, that's how they that's how they should go down. Every day. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I I agree. I agree with that completely. Like I said, I could have seen the Lord of Change coming down twenty points, especially given the how where other caster monsters are sitting in the meta right now. Like obviously, Skaven aren't anything to like model your balance after, but like, <laughs> I just yeah. I don't know, like. They could have come down a little bit. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Cool. Uh, right on. Uh, yeah, I mean, some people in the comments were voting for Screamers. I legitimately had to go relook at the Screamers War Scroll to see if I thought it was even salvageable. <sighs> I, I'm going to argue that 
I think there could be a points cost where screamers are interesting if we're talking about only using them as chaff, as throwaway chaff. Like they'd be, they'd have to be redefined. I don't think they actually do anything other than be very fast uh, flying chaff that could be in the way of stuff. I can't think of anything else that they're useful for because they're, they aren't killing anything. That's for sure. Uh, all right. At any rate, let's keep moving. Uh, quickly about, uh, let's mention that we should mention the ever chosen. The Varen guard went down by 20 points. Cool. Who cares? Please put out the ever chosen slash STD slash dark oath slash whatever we're calling this book. Okay. Yes. Great. Yeah. Yes, please. Thank you. Wonderful. We all okay. want it. We all want it. Please make that happen. We're all excited that Archeon would be playable again. And when you put out a new book, you're, you've proven you're not afraid to rewrite some more scrolls. So I may even be now's willing the to buy time. another. I may even be willing to buy another limited edition uh, ever chosen book. <laughs> Round two. <laughs> there you go. All right. You know, I my uh, local gaming store the other day. I found 10 unopened copies of the ever chosen painting guide. <laughs> That's amazing. That's awesome. That's oh, a winner of a product right there. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Maggot Kin of Nurgle. Uh, yet again, we saw mostly across the board cuts. Yet again, nothing more than 20 points. But I thought all of it was was positive. Some of it's on scrolls that don't matter. Like Slobbity Pile Piper went down by ten points. Cool yeah. story, bro. Yeah, look, like look, it's look Nurgle Lotan. Yeah. You're not fooling me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, what I would say is that, uh, like, I have a really mixed relationship with this because I love my Nurgle. I'd love to put it back on the table, but um, like the big egregious parts of this are the fact that um, like the named heroes like Bloab, Morbidex, uh, like even at two when Orgots, even at two forty, like they're just not there. Sorry, folks, they're, they're not single carrying their water. No, like they're single cast wizards. Uh, they need to like, or like one's a single cast wizard. I just, um, I don't know. They're not offensive enough, not defensive enough, not magical enough. They don't have enough of a defined role. They're trying, they're kind of all around her and it's tough for an all around her to earn points. Up to, to they're earn like value. bad manticore writers. Yeah, sure. Because they yeah. can't get items. They can't. Uh, they can't get command traits. They can't get any of those other things. You can't mark them. However, you, even though, like they're Nurgle, obviously, but like they just and they're sitting in that same spot as like the sorcerer on Manticore, uh -huh. um, and they're forty points more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. N Nurgle is just still suffering from the fact that his thing is defense. It doesn't have enough offense, and at the moment. Offense is what is winning games. Um, when you compare it to the other books and the other options, the sheer amount of damage that comes out. Um, if you're running Nurgle, you're taking Pestilence, right? You're taking Plague Monks. Yeah, and that's one of those things that, like, I would hope... Here's what I'll say. If... This is going to be a common refrain. If in a couple weeks the appropriate punches happen... <laughs> <laughs> right. And by the way, one of those things should be plague. Somebody needs to Terry Tate office linebacker, those plague monk points. Like just, I mean, boom. Um, the, you know, they, they should move up some is what I'm yes. saying. Uh, I, I don't want to see things unplayable by the way, just to be everybody be clear. I, I own a Skaven army, right? Like I don't want to see the book rendered unplayable. Please don't, please don't make this KO part two or Zinch part two. Like it's cool. We can fix the problem in the correct way. But at any rate, in a world where a lot of those like newer offensive things that have come out perhaps get reined in, uh, I would argue that that I think Nurgle might be in a pretty good spot. They were they were showing up in that contention list at the beginning of the year. I'm not saying they were taking a lot of events; they weren't, but they were showing up in some top tens, mm -hmm. right? So well, my hope would be that that things like maybe the Puscoil Blight Lord dropping down to 200, maybe that's right. You know, I don't like it. It feels closer than two. I like it. I'll say that. Yeah. Much, you know. Yeah. 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 I like it. I don't know if it's aggressive enough for me. 
Uh, but I, I like where it's sitting. Um, what I'll say is that uh, the big the big sin right now is the fact that uh, Blight Kings turn off with penalties to hit. Sure, absolutely. I mean, that just again, that just feels like such an easy change, right? Like just just bip, make that just publish that new war scroll, please. <laughs> it has been made unmodified, fixed. Right, <laughs> because the reality is, is that like Blight Cyst was their go to. And with the proliferation of neg ones to hit that are just everywhere in the meta right now, right? Like the army's a non-starter, and and that's like that's what hurts more than anything else because that affects your that affects your plus goil blight lords, um, that affects your blight kings, um, and yeah, yeah, sure, I get you. Yeah, all in all, I think there's there's um, I think that there is some interesting. There are some interesting plays to be made if we can just make a few minor changes. I, I agree with you, by the way, Tom. The unmodified thing is is crazy. But that being said, I don't think that like the only path to victory on uh, through Nurgle is through like the Blight King derivatives. But I think that I would rather that also be part of it or be an option, right? And you're absolutely right that the pro proliferation of Neg ones effectively means those guys have no abilities, right? They're right. just they they become instantly that, bad. That is their special ability, and they right. lose that. They just become kind of bad basic troops, <laughs> you know, at that point, right? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. And, but, you know, there's already some interesting lists in Nurgle as it is, like Thricefold was cool before, stuff like that. So there's, there's, Nurgle's there. It doesn't need much of a bump to start, to start being real interesting. Uh, okay. I don't care to talk about Slaves of Darkness, but we can mention, I guess, their faction thing real quick. Chaos Chariot got, you can take them in units now, right? So they can have <laughs> units of them for 210. They've, they've done chariots across the board. So chariots in all the different factions have all now got this being able to take in units ability. Swift talk agents, baby. Woo! Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, you know, I remember when I was a young lad, younger lad, I guess I still wasn't that young. But let me but let me take you back to the year of like 2004 when I was Two playing Warhammer. And they introduced this new army called Tomb Kings. And their special thing was that they had chariots as core troops. And moreover, you could take units of them. And I was like, oh my God, the world has changed. And I went out and bought a box of chariots and a box of skeletons. And that like the battle force box or whatever, you know, that, that the big battle force box that came out. Uh, for Tomb Kings. I went out and bought all that stuff right away when they came out. I thought this was the coolest army ever. And then I spent the next like 10 years losing with that force. I never, I, I never uh, under that time of like sixth edition, whenever they came. Yeah, it was six. So whenever the, whenever they came out to like the end of sixth, I did not win a single game with them. <laughs> I played them weekly. That is a, it was an unprecedented lose rate. Anyway, now everybody has that. Who cares? So there you go. Everybody gets chariot unit style. Uh, sure. And then Marauder Horsemen went down, but lost their ability to have a massive unit discount. Like, was anybody looking at that? Were we going units of Marauder Horsemen? Was that going to be a thing? 30 deep on the Marauder Horsemen? No? Okay, cool. Let's keep going. They, they, they could be a typo. We'll see. <laughs> um, that takes us into death, doesn't it? <clears throat> Yeah, brings us into death. Yes. Oh, the slaves to darkness uh, faction ability. We should comment on that since it existed. Um, it's still there. It's still bad because it's the same one from the last one. It wasn't good before. It's not good now. Cool. The, the here's better for hoping, way. Here's for hoping that that stuff changes. Like again, when the new books come out. So the better way, to like just right now, I can't remember the analogy someone made, but but like slaves to darkness is the better way to play it is obviously as any marked God, anyone, any of them are better. Roll a die, roll a D four. I don't care. Right. It's fine. Um, the, now here's where I think the miss was. Do you want to know what I think the miss was? By the way, this is going to, I'll, I'll lay this on the table now. Cause I think this is true for when we come to like, um, ogres and stuff too. I know GW plays very cagey. Here is my ask of you, GW. Here's the way you can solve this. Okay? You can say, we didn't make any major points moves with Faction X, Slaves to Darkness, Ogres, whatever. 
which you didn't watch plans because they are going to be getting a new tome in 2019. Now, if the reason they didn't say that is because they think this customs thing might continue and they might not be able to get any more tomes, that really sucks. And I hope that's not the case. And then in which case, if that's like what's going on behind the scenes and they're struggling with this huge trade problem right now and it's like kneecapping their business, they don't need me spitting on them when they're in like a, a life-threatening sort of situation because that's what's happening. Like I cannot imagine the corporate panic that would be going on if they thought future books were caught in that same situation. And that would be terrible because it's completely out of their control. Right? So, but if that's not the case, then just say you're going to do the books. Just say it. Just say, because look, you don't have to say anything more than that. It's coming in 2019. Announce yeah. some kind of roadmap. Or you like just that. say like, we have plans for this in 2019. And and you know what? Great. Great. Awesome. Like then everybody who is playing that faction, sure, they're a little let down that they didn't get any like big things through points, but they know they've got a book coming. They know they got attention coming. Whatever. I waited this long. I can wait a couple more months, right? Like that is fine. And so to me, that just feels like the easy answer. That's such low hanging fruit. Just increase that. Uh, just increase that transparency and you've got a pure, you, you turn what was something that caused some acrimony into a pure win, right? Because there was a great discussion on TGA this week around like a lot of people were hoping points would save some of these weaker factions and some, maybe they could, but there's a lot that they just couldn't because as had been pointed out and I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can dig up this, this thread and, and post in there. Cause I thought it was really, really insightful. The, basically, the, this, this person had performed like a mathematical regression analysis on the scrolls and basically said some of these scrolls are beyond saving. You'd have to point them so ridiculously low that then if they ever did get a book and then suddenly snapped back into being useful, you'd get this whiplash effect of like you'd need to drop this 120 point thing to 40 points. And then when the book comes out, they're going to go back to 120. And believe me, even though they just went back to what they are, the anger over going from 40 to 120 is, you know, twice as high, 10 times as high as the happiness was of going from 120 to 40, right? Which is just insane anyways, because people are going to run out. If they price them at 40 points, you run out, you got to go buy a hundred more models. And then all of a sudden they should rock at the points back up and half your, and now everything you bought is worthless. And so, yeah. And, and Hey, Whoa said, so we don't do anything at all. Yes. You don't do anything at all at the moment and you announce we're doing this thing instead soon. That's the well, easy solution. If the whiplash is say, a problem, just be transparent. Well, they did say that that they are you know planning on within a year releasing one. Tome. All. Yeah, they said within a, within by the end of 2020, we want to have all the factions addressed. Cool. So we know that's true, and we know there's one more tome of each alliance coming this year. Okay. Well, if you're already saying both of those things. Then yeah. just say what else is coming. Just put the, the ogre player and the ever chosen slaves to darkest people, just put their fears to rest. Right? It's so easy. <laughs> right? Like, why are you hiding the shark under the water? There's no reason for that. You've already, in, in these broad terms, stated your plans. Um, and so, like, just just be specific. And yes, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, as somebody pointed out, it's an it's a it's loss aversion, and there's an asymmetrical response to loss as opposed to gain. Yes, absolutely. There's lots of lots of good behavioral economics and behavioral psychology underneath this. But anyways, you can't whiplash points like that. It would it would be negative for so many reasons. Anyway, that's my rant on that. Sorry, that was something I wanted to get out. Dan, I mean, I, you know, any other thoughts on that? Am I am I way off base here? What do you think? Because to me, the answer is yeah. just be transparent. Yeah. And look, the thing is they've done it in part and so they know they they signal part of the information, but yeah, more more information helps. Um, the only reason that you'd be nervous about it is if you're going, well, the reason why we haven't changed this is because they're getting squatted. Um, <laughs> which mm -hmm. for many of these, it's probably safe to say that they're not going to be squatted. They're just going to get... Um, modified into a new life as something completely different. Um, but yeah, that's the only reason why you keep Stum, right? Yeah. So, so that's, that would be my, my one piece of feedback to, to like, I really think this release, this GHB was an incredibly positive thing. Like 
Points aside, yes, there's some things that could have been better. That's always going to be the case. It's never going to be an absolute perfect points thing that comes out. But, like, there's so much to love in this book. It's absolutely fantastic. When we get to the scenarios, love it. But go the rest of the way. That's You want to go the next mile? You want to take the next inspect and adapt improvement? That would be my feedback. So there you go. All right. Yeah. Because we can always improve. No matter how good we're doing, we can always do better. All right. Death. Flesh Eater Quartz is coming in the PDF, as has been discussed. Please punch the appropriate things in the face where deserved. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. And then, uh, so Legions of Nagash. Dan, you want to take us through this one? Sure. So there's, sort of, there's been a number of headline changes for Legions of Nagash and then some smaller, more interesting ones. Um, so Nagash got hit with a 50-point rise up to 850. So combine that with Portal 2, that's um, a significant change to that kind of list. Um, personally, I didn't see much Nagash running around the place locally. Um, so that's an interesting uh, change. The other Mortarks, we get a drop for Manfred. Manfred goes down 40. Um, Clint will be happy. Um, Arkham goes up 20. Um, yes, Arkham was probably the most popular of the three, but Arkham um, 11 runes was easy enough to take down with range threat. Um, Neferata went down 20. Um, so those are the sort of big hitters in terms of the Mortarks um, and the Gash and the Legions and the Gash. And then when we get into the rest of the units, um, there's some sort of winners and losers here. So necromancers went up, as you'd expect. They've gone up 20, but people will still take necromancers. Um, Direwolves have gone up um, 10 points, um, which may or may not impact. I think you'll see more people taking skeletons um, in these kinds of uh, grand host lists or these gash lists. Um, Bloodseeker Palaquin's gone down. Who really fucking cares? Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> Tell me how you really feel, man. Jeez. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Um, Blood Pretty Knights. Um, okay, Blood Knights 13 Every We get one. It's cool. Yeah, so Blood Knights have gone down um, 40, but they're pretty much the same damage output as Black Knights. So I don't think why would you be taking Blood Knights? And yes, you're taking that weird um, mercenary option. Um, then we get into some more interesting things. Um, Graveguard have changed. So Graveyard used to be 80 points for five. Um, they've now gone to 140 for 10 um, and a 360 horde discount. Yeah. So they're definitely worth um, spending some time with. I know Tim, the local game in Hamilton, absolutely loves his grave cards, so I'm sure we'll be seeing more of them um, in large units on the table. Um, hex rates have gone down 20 points, so that's useful for Nighthorn and Legion Woo! Blue. Oh, it's looking near Tom. Um, Morgaths have gone down 20 points. Morgas have still got the limitations that they've always had, right? right. So Morgas, you're going to see, you might see one unit of two um, with the 3D6 charge and the long sticks to go over the, um, to fly over behind chaff screens and start hitting something. But I don't see you're going to be seeing lots of Morgas on the table. Um, Vargas have gone down 10 points and the new Lamia Battalion have no idea what that does, has gone up 40 points from 110 to 150. Sure. Okay. Yeah, you're right. It's like clearly game breaking. Yeah, that no. one. Sure. Just huge swing. So yeah. that was, that was, that one, I saw that one and I was like, what? What? Uh, <laughs> it's, because, it's because of all the rest of the vampires went down. Sure. Like everything else that would be fitting in it, like the Blood Knights, all went down. Like Legion cool. of Blood, and what they didn't want suddenly was this huge swing where all the vampires showed up. Like right. because I mean, it feels like it would have been fine. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I mean, I get it. I I That's can't wait for GHB 2020 when we just move that back down to 110. So that's <laughs> fine. Uh, because we all realized that it didn't matter. But whatever. Uh, wrong. No, I like. There's a lot. This is a really interesting one overall. Uh, Legions, like this one is, is one of the most mixed slash interesting to me. Uh, I love Graveguard down at that price at, at, at 140, 360. Totally agree. 
that's totally a agree. super interesting unit to me. We'll talk about Hex Race more in a minute. It's not really relevant here. It's more part of Nighthawk, but I like them coming down. Um, I, I'm Manfred went the wrong direction. He should have went up another 40 points, not because he's actually worth it. Just cause I don't want to see Manfred on the table ever. So just make yeah. him like, just make him unplayable. But no, I mean like him moving down was jokes aside is, is obviously correct. He was overcosted. Um, Neferata coming down was fine. She's still probably overcosted. Archon, yeah, he's made a paper. I don't know. He's fine at 320. He's probably fine at 340. I don't know that there's like some exact answer for him. I think the Morgas could have come down another 20. They could have been 180, right? Like that, they they absolutely feel like they're a unit worth 180 to me. Yeah. Um, even at 180, they might still be a little underwater, but at least then I think they'd th you'd, you'd look at them twice. Uh, the thing that does surprise me is the Nagash movement. I, it, if I, if I looked at any of this and said, what's unnecessary other than the new Lamia thing, which, okay, <laughs> it's the Nagash movement. Nagash didn't yeah. need to go up. I like Nagash being in the meta, being like something that could be taken. He's, he's a good a boogeyman. Yeah. He's a good boogeyman. That's out there. Like keeping magic armies in check. Right. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I just feel like I'm not sure why that happened. Yes. He's powerful in the realms. You know, yeah, he's probably still not like tremendously overcosted because I mean, it's you know, percentage wise, it's not that big of a move, but it just didn't need to happen, right? right? It was. Do you, do you think we've got this perception because the majority of the independent tournament scene don't play realm spells? They'll use realm, a uh, realmscape feature maybe, and realm artifacts, but don't play realm spells often. I don't know. Most of the um, tournaments I play and use realm spells over here yeah. in the US. Yep. So, like, I mean, I've I've faced him down under realm spells before, and like, yeah, he's he's real good. Like, he's a shit kicker. Okay, <laughs> he's also eight hundred points. I mean, like, yeah, you sh you should have a good spellcaster for that kind of an investment. Like, I'm okay with it. I don't know. It mm -hmm. never. It just it just didn't feel like a a, a game breaker to me. Um, you know, yes, he is a boogeyman. I I have to wonder if this one wasn't. Like if this is one of those, it's not for you situations because he is one of those things that I guess requires, like can be very scary, especially to like an experienced tournament player will generally be able to understand how Nagash works and, and play around him, play to him, defeat him, answer him something, right? We'll be able to like engage with that, that problem in some kind of interesting way. Whereas he is kind of a big bully that where if you're a newer player, Maybe it's a bad experience, and maybe that's why they adjusted him because they thought he's, you know, I don't know, he's he's undercosted for if there's there's a, my point is that like a knowledge gap is what makes him actually worth eight hundred. If you don't have that knowledge, maybe eight fifty is more right. I don't know. Either way, it doesn't feel like it needed to happen. <laughs> and there you go, Tom. Yeah. 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 I mean, like I I'm happy that I don't have to face Nagash anymore. Like that's what happened here, is that they moved it so that Nagash will realistically not show up in the metal a whole lot, um, and I, and I don't feel bad about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, mean, you can't bring him in one K lists. He can't be used in meeting engagements anymore. I was sad about that. My favorite one K list has been ruined of Nagash, two units of dogs, and the corpse cart. That's mm -hmm. that's that's all gone now. It's dust in the wind. Dust wind, dude. Okay. Yeah. Anything else you want to say about legions? Uh, yeah. What I would say is that uh, I like the change to necromancer um, because it doesn't happen in a vacuum. It happens in a world where necromancer is now immediately available to all people. Um, yeah. uh, namely, uh, you know, what, where that's most significant, I think that people aren't thinking about is uh, suddenly necromancer showing up in night haunt, um, which is a real big <laughs> yeah. deal. Uh, because here's the deal, folks. Uh, Necromancers buff summonable units. Guess what Night Haunt has in Profusion? Sure. Summonable units. And, yeah. like, all of his synergies actually work with Night Haunt. Um, like, the interception and all that other stuff. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, I think that that was the right move. Like, whether they intended that or not, uh, it was, it was what needed to happen, given the under other changes that are happening. Yeah. So, it was a smart move. No, that's fine. 
And yes, as uh, as Sean Clark Clark pointed out, the correct answer is spell portal, not a corpse cart for that remaining for those remaining points or was. But yes, it's all been ruined now, Sean. But anyways, so yeah, I I don't know. I I still think like I'll be interested to see how much Nagash still shows up. He's such a power piece. You know, I'm not sure that 50 points being that percentage of a move means he doesn't show up anymore. Time will tell. I think Legion's got a bit of a mixed bag here. It's not all bad. It's not all good. Yep. Interesting things going around. Um, I think it'll be, uh, you know, they're they're one to watch. They are and have classically been a pretty well-performing faction. The fundamentals yep. of what makes them a well-performing faction didn't change here. Right? They're... they're if, this, if this were like ESPN, we'd be talking about fundamentals all the time, and their fundamentals are strong. So, da 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 da. That's what this. That's what that noise is, right? Okay. I know sports things. You shut up. Night haunt. Tom, talk about them. Oh my god, I'm so excited. <laughs> um, so, if you all will remember, like this is what I like. Back at the turn of the year, I was like, I think I'm going to play night haunt, and it's because I was hanging my hat on the reality that there, uh, there were going to be a lot of points decreases. Sure. And basically. Everything short of Grim Gas Reapers dropped. <laughs> so, like, of all the changes, just across the board, 10 to 20 points. And whenever I would make Night Haunt lists, I would always feel like I was 10 to 20 points off. And so, like, the current list that I've been working on gained 160 points. I'm so that's, excited. Yeah, that's a lot of points. Like, no joke. That is not a small number of points to gain in a list. Um. And so, I mean, everything got touched. Dread Blade Harrow went, dropped down to 90. Night of Shrouds dropped down 20 to 100. Night of Shrouds on Steed dropped down to 120, 20 down. Craven King dropped down 20. Uh, Lady Olinda dropped down 20. Reichnord only dropped down 10, but he still dropped, which surprised me. Um, Black Coach dropped down uh, 20. It could have went down 20 more. Um, Chain Gas dropped down 10. That's unfortunate. I wish they would have just changed the maximum unit size. I just want more of those guys. Um, uh, Dread Scythe Herodans dropped down to 80 uh, instead of 90, which put their massive uh, regiment at 280. Right. That is, uh, that, that is a really interesting change um, because it, it changes the math on the, uh, the Banshee, the Banshee Herodan Battalion, um, which I think could be really scary in this new um, evolving meta like in a significant way. Um, we talked about bravery bombing and the problem being that everybody has command points to just become immune. Uh, that battalion says no. Sure. No, no, no inspiring presence. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, you can't use inspiring presence when near uh, any of its units uh, combined with that. Uh, the other thing that the Herodans do that a lot of people don't realize is that if a unit has less than a six bravery and the, and the Herodans are in combat with that unit, it has a universal minus one to hit. So it doesn't matter if that unit is attacking the Herodans, if they're attacking anybody. It's less than hit. six, not equal to or less than six, right? Okay, sure. It's no, I'm just, I'm asking. I'm, yeah. I, I, don't I, I think it's, I think it's less than six. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's um, relevant because six is actually quite a common number for a lot of like the living armies, right? Like yes. there's a lot of sixes floating around, but there's less fives. Like five is the more scaredy pants factions, right? Got well, them. Night Haunt by default is neg one to hit. Like they're always sure. at neg, you mean one, neg one to bravery. Or neg one, neg one bravery. Like yeah, if you're yeah. near any of their units, they're neg one bravery. It's and there's point. enough other penalties floating about that um, that it's it's easy to get to that. And especially when you have the potential of throwing a Morn Ghoul in, you could actually have quite a few penalties to hit just kind of floating around in the list. I mean, you um, shouldn't put a Morn Ghoul in, but I understand what you're. I get what you're pointing at. Which, uh, by the way, the Morn Ghouls also dropped in points. Um, yeah. uh, Grim Grass Reapers went up. If you didn't see that coming. I mean, really? Um, so uh, Hex Race dropped down to 20 and to 140, and that's the big win here. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, 10 or 10 unrendable wounds uh, on a 140, four attacks a model. Um, can go in a battalion where they double pile in on nines, throw a necromancer, the tripling pile in it, triple piling in on nines to charge. Um, and. Uh, uh, it's gonna be so good. Um, and then uh, Miramorn Banshees. Uh, the, interestingly, they were at eighty per four. They went dropped down to seventy per four, but lost their horde discount. So that means that they're basically they cap at the same. Before they were like uh, eighty capping at two ten. Now they're just seventy capping at two ten. Um, and so they're incentivizing smaller units or the possibility of that. 
Um, Vault of Souls and Shyish Reaper both went down to 20 points. Um, I would run Vault of Souls. I was looking at it at 30. Is that the treasure chest? It is. It is. Yeah. that uh, Where basically, like, it, you roll dice for all models within eight inches um, on every natural six, it does a mortal wound. So right. You know, and it's building toward 20 mortal wounds when it explodes or whatever. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's like a floating, like, uh, uh, whatever the, like, pestilential blip breath or what are whatever are sure. yeah so i mean it's a ni it's a nice little tool that floats around and is annoying as i'll get out for 20 points sure i mean I at 20 it. points that ain't bad no I, th I think it's actually it's a, it became a very interesting spell at 20 points yeah yeah no i love everything about what's going on here um i i love this like i'm i'm excited i had predicted that we would see massive discounts and we did um and so like i uh, Night Haunt is still my plan. <laughs> you know, uh, I detoured obviously into Fire Slayers given the book drop and all that. I'm gonna get that get this finished uh, painting up and then uh, and then I'm probably gonna roll out a full Night Haunt army. Nice. All right. Uh, cool. Dan, any thoughts on on the Spooky Boys? No, I, uh, Thomas pretty much covered it off. Um, Ash covered his, covers it off very well in the faction breakdown on um, the Honest War Gamer. So nothing really to add on that. Uh, yeah. Actually, let me add something real quick. Um, the other piece of the puzzle here that hasn't been talked about is the fact that Legion of Grief just dropped. Um, Legion of Grief is the new uh, from Forbidden Power, uh, like death-ish faction. That's not Night Haunt and not uh, Legion of uh, Nagash, but it's somewhere in between uh, the two. Um, and it basically is a night haunt army that gives them graves um, and significant uh, command point regeneration. Um, so they gain all the grave markers plus a bunch of like they gain all the command point tricks where like uh, they get a command trait that lets them like every time they spend a command point, they roll a dice and on a five up, they get one back and sure. they can get the item. They have the brooch that. effect automatically. Yeah. Yeah. And so they can like double brooch and just go super silly. Um, and then the Harridan as a general is really good for bouncing around the combat, com like uh, on the battlefield, and in like jumping to graveyards and be able to pop people up. You know, it's like the ultimate mobility general. Yeah, um, you mean the Dreadblade so, Harrow? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. what I meant. Sorry. Um, and so he's going to be. Uh, so that's going to be a list like that. If you don't realize it, like that with a bunch of. Um, uh, a bunch of blade dice and stuff like that, like just like sending uh, units into the grinder because it will like that list generates command points like no other. Sure. Um, so uh, so that'll like I think the new death list like that and I honestly think Night Haunt will be the kind of the movement of where where death is going to be at. Um, assuming that like uh, assuming that flesh eaters get a nerf bat. Sure. Um, I could, by that that said, I could. I think there's also gas in like a death march skeleton army as well. Sure. Now the grave guard are in the realm of reasonable. Yes. Sure. Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, it's time for uh, destruction. Okay. So, <laughs> a faction that I sometimes forget exists: Beast Claw Raiders, uh, BCR. Never have I seen an across the board points drop met with a more <laughs> overwhelming amount of meh. Uh, it's fascinating. They, you know, like they uh, across the board, a bunch of stuff dropped. Not, not good things, <laughs> but things. I mean, I guess Yeti's got cheaper by 10 points. Those are a thing people used. So that's cool, I guess. Uh, Mornfangs went down 20. Okay. Uh, the Battleline dudes. Like the the non hero big guys, the, I don't you know what I'm talking about. Like whatever, Stonehorn Beast Riders, the Beast Rider dudes, they went down by twenty. The uh the the battalions dropped like an outrageous amount, like 90, 70 points or something in a couple of the cases, right? Um, yep, great, great, okay. The problem is none of the things people tended to have in lists other than like maybe maybe a little bit. Sometimes you'd see a couple more Fang or you'd see some Yetis. But, you know, this isn't really the stuff that actually made up their lists changed. So. OK. Cool. Dan, any thoughts on BCR? 
Okay. Is there anything that you can do with any of this in a mixed destruction force now that you've got lower points? On yeah. the assumption no. that you're just writing off Beast Claw? I mean, I'm again, this should have been like a book is coming or something, like, or not, just <laughs> abandon all hope you enter here. I don't know. Like, either post that a book is coming or the sign, something. Do something. So, you know, there you yeah, go. The winter. <laughs> yeah, indeed. The Everwinter has come. It has claimed them. All right. Uh, cool. We'll skip green skins because no. And we'll talk about one of the big winners of the book, the Iron Jaws. Oh, boy, goody. This, let me say this. How good is what happened with Iron Jaws? This is how good what happened with Iron Jaws is. And I said this on the on the faction reaction with, with Rob. I don't want a book. Get rid of it. <laughs> if you if you had it, throw it in the You're trash. You're like, don't touch your points. <laughs> We're fine. We're fine. Just stop touching it. You're just gonna be like, I'm just worried to make it. You'll screw it up. It's fine. Wherever where where Iron Jaws is at right now is great. So what happened with points is like some points went down. Nothing went down hugely. I should state like model wise. Um, brutes went oh. down ten. The uh, mega boss on Mark Russia and the and the and Gordrak both went down twenty. Cool. Um, yeah, I mean our boys went down like twenty points. Okay, cool. Um, like I'm not saying it's nothing. I'm just saying like it's not. Again, none of these were like massive moves. Our boys didn't suddenly become a hundred points, right? Like that would have sure. been a like just an earth shattering move. Um, right. The battalions, most notably the mega battalions, dropped forty points. Like I went from spending three hundred on battalions to spending two forty on battalions. Right there, just my battalions, I saved sixty mm -hmm. points. Right, um, in my list. So great, good, wonderful. That's a heck of a, a lot of savings. You do that plus say like your two units of brutes. That's a free war channer or something like that. Like you, you can pick your, you know, whatever your, your poison is yeah. there. It's not like or, it's increasing drops for you. <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, we still get to be the one drop faction, uh, two with two great battalions. They made the battalions better. The mega battalions. They're better now, both of them for different reasons. I won't go into detail, but they are both better and, and in, in significant ways. Um, they got better and they got cheaper. Um, they moved the mighty destroyers thing from the generic ability that like destruction has to a command ability. That's better because yes, it takes command point, but I don't have to roll a stupid dice and fail it anymore. And it lets me fight in the hero phase better than start fighting at the start of combat fighting at the start of the turn. That's what I'll say. So, uh, you know, that also made brute fist really interesting since brute fist has an ability to charge for free in the hero phase. So, why not both? Um, you know, so you can you can actually charge out of brute fist and then fight in the hero phase, which you know, great, great all around. Uh, also, yeah, that that brute fist itself got cheaper, so great, great, great. And they got a spell lore with a teleport, folks. I don't know what to tell you here, man. It's a, it's a great world we live in. Uh, you know, so. I don't know. Maybe I'm taking my son's uh, Iron Jaws to uh, Havoc. <laughs> you know, thumbs up. Like, a lot of good options in there. I think there are actually... Mul what's, what's fascinating to me about Iron Jaws is I literally think there are now three or four playable armies out of those out of iron jaws right like different ways you can take it there's sort of a an ard boys heavy thing that relies on mm -hmm. big giant units there's sort of a more traditional M msu build there's lots of like you know some gore fist is still i think absolutely viable it got cheaper um like the battalion not the pigs um yeah I, all in all i i i'm super excited about it um you know, again, they're still not a great faction. Do not let me let me go ahead and temper my thing here. If your plan is to go win tournaments, well, and you're bringing Iron Jaws, you have chosen uh, poorly. <laughs> this is still not the correct answer. I, like, I have some Hearth Guard Berserkers I'd like to introduce you to. <laughs> sure, but like my point is, like that's not what they are. They're still a fairly mono-dimensional army, right? Like they still basically fight. And they have they have one phase of the game they're relatively active in, which is fighting. They're real good at punching. Um, so great, but like and now they punch in the hero phase. Yeah, and they can you can you can pull that trick off. So great. Um, but they still have basically terrible magic. They still have no shooting. 
their movement game is is decent enough, but the army has one flying model. <laughs> so mm. still very easy to chaff. There's still a fairly elite army and everything bad that brings with it, right? Um, so, you know, but they're good. I, th I think they are competitive. They're exactly where I love my armies to be. Competitive, fun, highly responsive to the pilot. You can play well with them and, and probably have an incredibly fun uh, either individual game in your basement or a fun time at a tournament uh, playing out some real, real fun games. And more importantly, you are always going to give your opponent a fun game with Iron Jaws. Yeah, right? definitely. So the, there's a lot of very happy people down in New Zealand. Um, in a month ago or a month ago or so, I was at the Notorious GT, which was New Zealand's first 50 player event. Nice. Uh, um, Age of Sigma and probably the first 50 player Warhammer event for about 10 years um, and, or Warhammer fantasy event. Um, and the most represented faction uh, tied with Flesh Eater Courts was Iron Jaws. So there will be a lot of um, happy Iron Jaws players um, nice. in the land of the long white cloud. <clears throat> yeah, as much as we talk about competitiveness and all that, you know, Doc, as it was super competitive, you watched its like meta percentage shrink. Like, yes, there are some people who will always play things because they're competitive. But look, sometimes people like playing really fun armies. And you know mm. what? Iron Jaws delivers a fun game 10 out of 10 times, baby. It is a hundred. It might not be a hundred percent win rate on LV stats, but it's a hundred percent fun rate. That's what I'll say yeah. for sure. Guarantee yeah. it. Some some people just pick the army because they want to paint a more crusher like Spyro, uh, <laughs> which is totally understandable and awesome. Like it's a fun army to paint. It's a fun army to play. It's great. So yeah. At any rate, cool, cool. Uh, couldn't be more thrilled with all the Iron Jaws changes. They're they're wonderful and. Yeah, good stuff. That's one of those factions where I think points and those minor changes they were able to do in the GHB are exactly what you can adjust, right? Uh, there are a couple others that are probably close like that that I think were missed opportunities kind of in general. You know, I don't know. Could you have saved like BCR on points and sort of uh, GHB changes alone? Mm, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. You could have taken a better swing at it than you did. <laughs> but like... <laughs> but, uh, but like, they're, they might be in a situation there's some kind of line right where it's like if you're if you're not this tall some points changes and the ghb can't save you like you need a book we got to do major surgery here right this isn't an outpatient procedure so you know there you go okay all right let's talk about order shall we moving on Sure. Uh, so let's talk about the horrible soup that is order. I love how with the rest of this stuff, as we've talked through the other three factions, it's mostly matched to like books. There's a few factions. It's gotten tight. It gets yeah, gotten got, tight. Those yeah. other three, we've tightened them way up. And then you get to order and it's just like, blah, nonsense everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, remnants of the old world. How you doing? Hello again. All right, so we must begin, gentlemen, with the Collegiate Arcane, which is not a statement or sentence I thought I would ever utter on this show, and yet here we are. And the reason we have to start there is not because the Battle Mage dropped 10 points to 110. No, no, no. It is because now you have the option to take the Celestial Hurricanum or the Luminarch of Heish without their wizard on them at a reduced cost. With the Luminarch without the Wizard being three, or sorry, the, the Huracanum without the Wizard being three hundred, and the Luminarch without the Wizard being one sixty, one sixty. Okay, that's a that's a pretty cheap ward save bubble. Uh, uh and and cannon. Let's and not cannon. forget the thirty inch range six damage shot at Neg two Ren. Uh, sure. Absolutely. Absolutely true. And that... 12 wound model or true. 11 wound. Like it's 11, wound. That, it's that 11 wounds on, on a terrain. Day, yes. That can sit on terrain. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, the, um, the interesting part about the, uh, the Luminarch. Okay. Without, without the dude on it, um, where it's giving you the, you know, this, uh, first of all, it also, oh, by the way, it also adds the plus one to unbinding rules, right? Yep. Also relevant. Yep. Um, but like the fact that have they ever FAQ'd or reworded 
the aura of protection? No. No. So it stays, right? Right. At the moment, they didn't include the choice word of any bubble. Right. Right. So at the moment, unfortunately, this dumb thing stacks. Obviously, just okay. Please fix that soon. Thank you. Please and thank you. Yeah, um, please make it so I don't have to. I, I don't bring three of these. I'd appreciate well, that. I, I, I was scrounging around at the back of the hobby room trying to find my three. <laughs> 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 I was like, I was going to just put them on the screen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you know, it's interesting. I like I I've ran a Luminarch before. Um, like in a competitive list, and I love it. Um, I, I, I don't know if I would remove the wizard from the Luminarch. Oh sure, like that. That's a, that eighty points is doing a lot of work, no doubt about it, right? Like, and and I hate to say this, but even the Huracanum, because he's a plus one cast. Uh, I'm just saying, I love that they got that, that 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 those got split like that because there's a lot of armies where I would see it just being like, no, I'll do it without the dude. Yeah. At one six, like yeah. one sixty in your army is a very different proposition than it than is two forty. Yep, 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 yep. Or sorry, then uh, yeah, then two forty. So, yeah. there's, yep. um, there's a guy at Lord of War this weekend, Joel from Measured, who's taking four volley guns. Um, volley guns? No, the rocket batteries, not volley guns. Rocket batteries. Before um, before they go up in points, the hellstorm. Yeah. yeah. For Hellstorm and the um, the Hurricane and a whole range of free guild and just gonna shoot feck from a distance behind <laughs> the hill. <laughs> weapons, all stations, weapons free. Sure, that guy's gonna <laughs> run into like a Nurgle Mortal Wounds flash list and just have the worst day in the world when all those crew members just go, oh no, and die. <laughs> But hey, outside of that, cool. Right on. Yeah, I, I, I didn't say it was a flawless plan. <laughs> no, but that's okay. No plan in Warhammer is flawless. That's the trick. If it was, well, you know, then it'd be FEC. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a uh, uh, Gotcha. <laughs> all right. So, all right. At any rate. Uh, yeah, cool. Anything else you want to say about the, the Collegiate, the Luminarchs and stuff? Cool option. I'm glad they added it. Sweet stuff. It never should have been pointed the same. It was obviously vastly different. Yes. Yeah. It's going to come into play here in a minute on in, uh, in something else, but continue. Sure. All right, Darkling Covens. So, uh, cool. Got some minor points adjustments. Their, fa no their, their faction ability is basically the same, but changed to some holy within stuff for their, like, bonusing off each other. Yeah. Okay. Our local player is super happy about the dropped Blackguard. Um... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Blackguard going down 20 points to 120 to 320. It's a big um, move. Yeah. And they're an elite move. infantry too with with two inch reach. Yeah, they put a lot of hurt, they can get a lot of hurt out. Yep. The sorceress on Black Dragon missed the amount of points she needed to drop by that much. She was 280, <laughs> she went to 260. If she was it's this close. If we could just to get her down to a hundred, she'd be <laughs> worth it. Two hundred, two hundred, come on now. She is like a 12, like 14 wounds or whatever. She's on a dragon. Sure. I it, Realistically, just, she's not as good as the Sorcerer Lord on Manacore, who is well, that's what I'm saying. Like, yes. Yeah, yeah, on a five yes. On yeah, her no. dragon. No. no. Yeah, she's, she's kind of a loss, but who cares? Nobody liked her before. The faction's still interesting. It, like, what it needs is it just needed like the spell lore support of having some interesting spell options and stuff like that. Like it has sorceresses, it has sorceresses mm. leading it. That's their, their leadership is wizards. You know, like I don't, okay. Just, you couldn't do that. Burn the half page on a spell lore there. Cause you could have given them like some kind of movement abilities. What they need is some kind of movement shenanigan, right? The problem right. is you're still just largely walking around those dudes. And yep. that's, well, Just, I will say this: they have they have the bringy dingy, and they they can also bridge. Sure. Um, so be like so they ha you know and they can get plus two to cast really easily. Yeah, sure. Um, so like they like maybe the movement options for them are out there. I, I'm I'm not gonna lie. Looking at Swift Talk, like I was looking at those uh those endless spells and how they change the game for things like Sword Masters and uh sure and other stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, look, Lunchbox the Bringy Dingy changes a lot of, of things, and he, he can be a play. I'm just saying, like, it feels like a spell lore was a gimme with them. I'm surprised we didn't see it. Because, again, they are a faction led by, led wizards. by wizards. 
The only heroes in their entire faction are wizards. Are wizards. Very unimaginative wizards, clearly. They haven't bothered to develop any of their own technology. They just, they're good. They just use whatever's available in the realm. All right. Uh, Daughters of Cain. Dan, you want to talk mm. us through Daughters of Cain? Sure. So the main things there were witch elves going up 20 points. So they've gone up to 120 and their horde discount's gone from 270 to 300. Uh, the hag queen, as expected, has gone up. A 50% increase on a hag queen from 60 to 90. Um, Harp renders have gone up um, by 10, um, mainly for allied purposes and others. You just see a lot of heart renders. And blood stalkers. Um, who I had to remind myself are the snakes with the bows, um, have gone down 20 points. So, They're so terrible! Sorry. Yeah, so in terms of the points increases, they're things that you'd expect. Um, I think everybody thinks that all it does is it sort of takes a little bit of the edge off and you might have to drop a unit. Um, but the impact on daughters strikes me the same as the impact on i net deepkin and the impact on order, order draconis when we get to it mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. they all have a particular build what we've done is we've said we've taken sort of 10 percent off that build but we haven't nerfed you so you can still run that build um but you're gonna have sort of 10 percent less of um your gimmick or um whatever you have that you're running in that yeah, I mean, I, I respect their restraint. A lot of people were calling for the hag to go to like 120 or something. Again, this is one of those places where I felt like just it would have been easier to just like move her up and also have a war scroll rewrite. You know, it just feels like one of those things where you could have like moved the scroll to be to which brew isn't forever in a day type of thing, you know, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, because which brew is the big offender, obviously. Yeah. Um, and like, there are 10 ways you could change which brew to make it <laughs> a more reasonable effect. You uh, shut your dirty mouth. I mean, look, it's it's fine. It's just whatever. Um, the heart renders. I'm surprised. I would have. I would have felt like at even at a hundred, they were still worth it. So the move to ninety is fine. Um, yeah. All in all, you know, daughters were like, daughters were old school. What we thought of as like kind of bent. Obviously, we've seen we've we had things go straight well beyond that. Uh, I, I don't. I think they were already kind of uh, largely people had learned how to to play against them they still need some adjustments the problems mainly sitting in hagnar i don't think you should fix the problem solely on points whatever whatever here we are it's fine if it is what it is and we've invented it and we're not going to uninvent it it's a fine enough shave i you know okay they're a good army yeah. this doesn't make them an ungood army it might reduce them some great yeah yeah I, it makes me sad that we're not uh like that so here's the deal uh hunter should be 120 you mean uh, the blood stalkers, the shooters? Yeah, the, the stalkers. The yeah, stalkers I mean the shooters should be, should be 120 and should have the word in the shooting phase removed from their dumb mortal wound trigger ability. Yeah. So yeah, it yes. can actually like yes. work with Marathi's command ability. So yeah. here's a funny story. If people say they're they're too powerful at 120, uh, you know what else is 120? They're, somebody's going to say inevitably, well, they're two wounds each, you know, and and oh, okay. Um, you know what else is at 120 that is two wounds each shooters? Aura Kurthgard. You know what you're not hearing about in the meta? Aura Kurthgard. Sure. I mean, whatever. Shooting is clearly like a thing that, that we haven't, we don't have general consensus around. And like, I get it, but that's like maybe in a in the Daughter's Army, they just don't want to make shooting a viable thing. And maybe like the unit's intentionally not meant to be played. Okay. <laughs> In a competitive thing, because they don't want shooting to be part of daughter's arsenal. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Like, if that's the decision, that's cool. I mean, I can get that. I can respect that. It's meant to be a melee army, so the shooting is overcosted. Okay. Cool. I can write them off. Doesn't matter. I built all mine as melee snakes, anyways. <laughs> so great. I got a ton of melee snakes. I'm ready to go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right on. Uh, the. Uh, <laughs> going to settle in for 20 minutes on Devoted of Sigma? <laughs> Absolutely. Like, let's get real into it. The Witch Hunter is down 10 points to 40. Shut up, moron. You're not worth a command point. You weren't worth a command point at 50. You're still not worth <laughs> one at 40. Next. You uh, shut your dirty mouth. He's look. He's a beautiful model. Who isn't worth it? I've actually got one on my on my uh, on my wall. I might paint it, pull I, out and paint I, sometime. 
I literally sent an email before this book came out and ordered one. I was yeah. like, I want to get, I want to get him before he disappears. He's so a very, like very nice model. Yeah. And now I'm going to field him at 40 points. <laughs> you knock yourself out. Of course you are. <laughs> All right. Uh, dispossessed Tom. I feel like uh, you should be the one to talk about this. You want to go, or is the wound still too fresh? I mean, here's the deal. This army took a nerf to their warriors because of mixed order. That's why this army took a, a, a nerf. Sure. Because warriors were not breaking the bank. If you were in dispossessed, you weren't running 120 warriors. Like that that's not a thing. You were investing other directions. Right? Um, and arguably, even for the bank for the buck, warriors weren't the deal. Longbeards are the deal. Right. They're sure. the four up re-rollable save with the neg two rend buffed. Um, and so like uh, I, I just, I, okay. Why? Like why? What? And why didn't the other units that needed to come down, come down like hammerers, for example, they're still running around. And why wasn't the pick changed? <laughs> why do they have to, this. why do they have to teleport? Why? Why do they have to wait a turn to teleport? So they can so they can claim for this two week period in between the release of the GHB and the FAQ, so they can claim the objective in the hero scenario and then leave. And it can't be disputed for a turn. In I duality mean, of death. I don't hate that. But sure. um <laughs> But just yeah, man. I just I I don't know. Like I I understand if they don't want anybody to play the faction. Oh, there it. you go. Yeah, the pick was changed. It's now within six inches. There you go. There you go, Tom. I'm yeah. Done. Okay. Cool. Fine. Whatever. I mean, dwarves. Uh, you remember the like? You must be this tall to be fixed by the GHB. Obviously, the dispossessed don't meet that line. Sorry, buddy. They're dwarves. <laughs> uh, okay. Eldritch Council. Swordmasters went down. Cool. This is part of your no. talk agent thing. Yeah. Like that's not a bad thing. That's amazing. No. Like, oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's part of your swift talk thing. Go ahead. Yeah, 300 points or 320 for 30 of those bodies. Like, I like Swordmasters a lot. Um, I could have used two inch ranges on those great swords, um, but uh, they're uh, they're pretty hot. So elves have, um, I, elves have unnaturally short arms. Everybody knows that. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I I thought it was a good trade, is what I would say, or a good uh, update for the Swordmasters. Okay. They clearly threw uh, Martin uh, a bone. Sure, sure. <laughs> Free peoples. Dan, take us through it, buddy. Sure. Uh, so another casualty of mixed order rather than anything else. Uh, the general on Griffin going down or going up from 260 to 280. Um, Demigriffs have gone down 10. I think, again, in the who cares category. Um, great swords have gone down 20 points. So they're now 120 with a horde of uh, 300. Um, and Outriders Pistoliers, so grab those mercenaries, um, at 120 points, so they've gone down 10. Sure. Yeah, I mean, like, everybody is crying bloody murder over the general on Griffin. Okay. He was, you know, sure. He's pretty, he was actually a pretty good piece at 260. He's still he a pretty well fine piece. It. He's a fine piece at 280. It's not the end of the freaking world. Like, well, okay, did it need well, to happen? No, probably not, but who cares? Whatever. Like, still, it's... Still stick the sword of judgment on him. Yeah, like sometimes there's just a right sizing. I think yep. they hit for the points, right? Like I think some some part of this activity is just them going like, this was a little too efficient. It does I see people make the following argument? This faction was underpowered, hence nothing in it should get points adjustments up. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that in general that can be a pretty good guide. Right. Like, yes, in right. general, you don't want to overtly nerf a weak faction. They're weak because probably a lot of their stuff is under or is, is overcosted. That could be a contributory factor. But the idea that you would say nothing is allowed to go up, that doesn't check out. Right. That doesn't pass the smell test. If everything always only goes down. Right. If you have this huge part of the game that's only going down, we're going to have it's a problem. Inflation. Right. Inflation is going to start happening. And like there is this vicious cycle we could get into. So sometimes there's just right sizing points. And I think the general on Griffin is a combination of the mixed order and the right size and the points. And moreover, like the, it's the, it's the reverse of the dispossessed problem. 
the, the dispossessed, you got the thing you might take multiples of going up, right? Or being like like the units, as it were, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas the heroes that you probably have one of went down. Right. Okay. And and to, to their credit, like the fact is, is that a room master or a room lord going back down to 80 to return sure. to dispossessed uh, is actually a really good deal. That is a good deal. Yeah. But like the, the great swords going down at one twenty three hundred, that actually kind of makes yeah. them a pretty interesting unit. Like there, that's kind of a, like, that's pretty cool actually. Yeah. Um, as, as part of like sort of a free people setup, they're kind of cool at that point. Um, you know, those are a bunch of dudes with a four up save and rend and, you know, pretty good attack profile that are suddenly down in like Bestigore territory right now. They're not as good as Bestigore still, but okay. Or sword, Swordmaster territory, if you will. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, I mean, they cheaper than Swordmasters, but yes. Um, yeah, fine. Uh, all in all, like I'm not, my point is I'm not crying bloody murder over the, over the general and Griffin. Like, did he need to go up? No, probably not. Is it probably a better points value for him? Is, is 280 actually probably a little more representative yeah, probably. Um, but again, like, it's, it's fine. Uh, they could do more. They could. Do, the missed opportunity here was there's there are probably some more points they could have played with within free people. But ultimately, they're one of those things that like they they need a book and you, they need a reasonable like defenders of the realms book. We've talked about it ten times. Let's mention it eleventh. Bring out the defend the the city defenders or defenders of the free cities or whatever book. And, you know, bring in the free peoples and, and the dispossessed and all these other things and let them all get together in reasonable, interesting ways, right? Cool. Do it like the Skaven book with the clans. Yep. And, uh, but not with everything horribly undercosted like Skaven. So, there you go. Uh, cool. Iron Swelled Arsenal, cannon down 20, Hellblaster Volley Gun up 40? Is that not the Hellblaster? Is it the Hellblaster or the, or the Hellstorm Rocket Battery? Which one went up? It's the Hellblaster, right? Yeah, the, the Hellblaster went up. Yes? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, mine, um, I don't have my book in hand. <clears throat> no, you're fine. I think it, yeah, I think it was the Hellblaster. Anyways, what, why? Yes, thank you. AOS coach confirmed. Yes, it is the Hellblaster. Cool. Okay, what, why, how, what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> that one's one of those I read and I was like, did you misprint a number? Did somebody punch the wrong key? <laughs> like, what happened there? Uh, but hey, the cannon going down is sweet. I dig that cannon at 140. That's cool. Cannons are sweet, uh, man. I dig that steam tank down to 240. Yeah, if particularly. We can we can get some more good in a year or two. Well, particularly in uh, in uh, Tempest Eye. Yeah, like, sure. like two up tank, turn one with uh, plus two movement. I'll take it. No, you know I'm a big fan of this because I, I classically love the. Uh, you know, I had built the 40k Imperial yep. Guard army with like, I I mean, I own four steam tanks for God's sakes. Okay, painted based four steam tanks, and uh, I love steam tanks. Tanks getting cheaper. Let's do that. I love steam tanks. I think they're fun as all get out. Making them cheaper sounds good to me. I like I like behemoth artillery models that drive around and shoot people. You know what's super cool? Shooting people with machine guns. It's super cool. <laughs> Better than that shooting people with machine guns and cannons and then running them over. All of that is super cool. So make it cheaper. I'm in. All right. IDK. So Dan, you mentioned these guys earlier. You want to kind of give an overall on where you feel they, they landed. Uh, a few tweaks, but it's largely the same Eels build. Um, but you're probably not going to see two soul squares or they're going to be making sacrifices in order to get um, the two soul squares into the list. Yeah, yep. It was it was a big jump. Yeah, so soul squires have gone up from one hundred to one thirty. So if you were running two, that's sixty points more. Um, more so, guard have gone up ten. Everything else apart from the other flavor reveals have gone down pretty much. So um, thralls have gone down ten. Leviathans down thirty. Not going to change anything. Aspect has right. gone twenty. Not going to change anything. Soul render down 20. Lotan is 20 down. Um, Sharks are 20 down and Reavers are 10 down. And again, it's just, you're still just looking at a the eel Poor build. Sharks. Poor sharks. Yeah, well, like I think the Thrall movement's actually interesting because there's already some people experimenting with some Thrall lists. So this does create a little more slack in their list perhaps. So, okay, fine enough. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Leviathan needed to drop just 
way more to be interesting. I don't know if there's a world where he's going to drop enough to be interesting. It could be that just he's one of those models that like, it's just not meant for competitive play. Like, okay, cool. I don't know. I think that there's gaps in the Leviathan. But. He needs to be a lot cheaper than 350 for that to be the case. Like, again, you could hit, like, there's probably some point value that's reasonable for him, but like, there does come some level of reasonableness, right? But anyway, the, the yeah. big myth to me here, where it felt like there was a really easy way to get two interesting models competitive and to change the lists, was honestly with the aspects. Again, like, uh are the sharks ever going to be useful? I don't know. The sharks sit in a weird place, like all chariots. The sharks are just their chariot, right? And chariots right. are always suspect. Um, like there's maybe one army in the game right now that has chariots that are actually useful. Um, yeah, swift talk agents. Boom! This is incorrect. You have chosen unwisely. You have dragged from the wrong cup. Uh, but like, it's the Eidolons, right? The Eidolons are where they had not, yeah. a chance. Like those guys aren't that far off of like points where they could be played. I'm not saying it's like another 20 points, but it's not dropping them to 200. We don't have a, we don't have a Gorgon situation here or a Cygor situation here. Right. Yeah. Like there are some points value realistically somewhere in the three hundreds. I don't know what it is. We can have a discussion and a sort of evaluation of what it is, but I think it's some meeting from 300 to 380. All, so all of these are valid yeah. choices, right? Where, where each of those could fall and suddenly be really interesting, compelling choices to build the, to build the, that would build, to build into the army. Totally right. right. Almost like take them and, uh, Vermin Lords and meet in the middle somewhere in terms of pointing. Sure. Mm -hmm. So there's somebody asked a question. I think that's interesting. So, uh, autumn asked, is it, is it too much to ask for all units to be usable? Yes. In high level competitive play is what we're talking about here. Yes. That mm -hmm. is too much to ask because in big armies that have lots of units, and even this doesn't have that many, but like there are only a certain number of roles I need to fill. And somebody's going to fill that role 1% better than somebody else. Like if I have certain offensive units, certain things, I can get a pretty wide swath, right? But like if the model range is this, there will often be some gap in between the two where there just isn't a good role for that. Or it could even be at a given point in time, right? Like, well, right, right now, this style of thing, like right now, shooting is out in or magic out right. in the meta. And so that's just not good. But if it comes around, it might be good again. So like the answer is yes, sometimes, not always. And sometimes it's only temporary, but it can happen. You can't keep every unit viable all the time between the shifting sort of demands to meta. Again, at the highest levels of competitive play, which is like what we're ostensibly viewing this through the lens of, I suppose. Now, if we're Sorry. just talking like a, a broad, if we cast a broader net, right, then I think that that'll you can you can broaden it accordingly, right? Depends that's, what that's, your level of playable is, which is we did a whole show on like what does playable even mean, and that's tough to define. Right, it's the skew I put on the conversation. I apologize. No, because I mean, the reality is, is that like you can run idle on snap and they're fine. They do what they need to do now. Are they like hyper efficiently costed? No. Yeah, but um, they could, they're, they're still too over costed for where they're at. Again, we could, that's why I said between 300 and 380 at one end of that spectrum is like super efficient probably. And at the other end of that spectrum is like, okay, maybe sometimes they get taken depending on how broad you cast the competitive net. But the right. point is that's higher than where we're at. <laughs> Right. Or, sorry, lower than where we're at, right? That's the sure. problem. I hear you. Yeah, okay. Any final thoughts, Dan, on on, uh, on IDK before we go away? No, it just feels a bit of a miss. Like, it's a lovely range. Uh, it'd be great to see some more of it on the board outside of people like uh, Ben Spinetti in Australia or Jono here who uh, run the larger beasts. Right. We want to see more of them on. We lost your video, but that's okay. You're still coming through completely clean on audio. Your 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 camera's locked with you on a thoughtful pose. I like it. So that's all right. Yeah, I'm sure your camera will come back in a second. Tom, it's your turn, buddy. You know what's up. You know what's up. It's time for the KO. Tom, is this the salvation you've been waiting for? Is is everything fine now? No. Come on now. Um, no. Is there a new age? Now, should we all wait for our new Karadran overlords to come uh, and rule us all? Uh, okay, what I'll say is this. Uh, this book, with these changes, 
got bumped back to um, 2018 levels of playability. And so much, but without like the silliness, I think of the, of the turn one tabling. Now that said, you might still get tabled by a turn one by a KO army, like in this new world. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's possible. Just um, in a slightly different way than what happened before. I know you've got it. I right. know if you want to hear about Tom's ridiculous armies, he's been thinking about, you can go listen to Tom's faction reaction on KO on the honest war gamer. Yeah, I mean, what I'll say is that I think that there are multiple, and this is significant, there are multiple KO lists that are going to be fun to play and potentially competitive. Uh, they're also going to probably be non-interactive as they table, you know, like remove lots of your toys. Um, but that's that's a design problem that they have to actually deal with by fixing the um, faction itself. Um, and we're not there yet. Um, we're still a ways off of them redoing the book, uh, probably six to 12 months. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that there's some viable stuff now. I think the, uh, so from a point standpoint, um, they rewound a number of the changes they made, they've made. they made in prior years. Um, chemists are back to 140. They got bumped up to 160 in this last uh, GHB, this last season. Uh, the uh, Thunder or the Sky Wardens also got dialed back to 100 from 120, where they got bumped up. Where they should have been. Yeah, they should have always been 100. So they got moved back to 100. So those are good changes. Uh, Would you say, Tom, that the boats came down out of the atmosphere? Uh, 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 uh. Sky puns. Go ahead. Keep going. Okay. Uh, I, what I'll say is that they uh, they have they have they have leveled out. Um, and that I think... Would that, you say it's uh, full steam ahead with the KO? <laughs> okay, we have to stop this. Um, what I would say is that I, I think that uh, the boats are a lot better. Um, the uh, I still don't see people realistically running gun haulers in any significant way. Um, one, because it suffers from the chariot problem. If you don't know this, gun haulers are just chariots. At least it's um, a chariot with a cannon on it, but sure, it's a, it's a it's a cannon that's not as good as the other cannon. But yes, right. Um, and the other challenge with the gun hauler is that it's not um, like it should be battle line. Like we've been banging this drum for a while. Right? It How is the be gun battle hauler not battle line optional? In How some is way? the gun? Yes. Um, like admiral as not general. generic battle line. Generic, yeah. No. Or, or yeah, battle like, line, yeah. 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 If admiral is general. You get another ship as battle line. Yeah, that that, that seems to that seems to check out. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing because Halo said the boats need to be cheaper or have better rules. Aether one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that pun got me. All right, I apologize. I'll continue. I couldn't um, let that moment pass. No, indeed. <laughs> Uh, the, the two changes, so, uh, points, both the Ironclad and Frigate came down 40, um, Gun Hauler came down 30, Gun Hauler is still fairly worthless. Frigates at 200 are super interesting. Yeah. Um, I have a double Frigate build that I was looking at that, uh, I really love, like, a lot. Um, or I think a Frigate Ironclad build is very viable right now as well. Um, another interesting change was Thunderers dropping down to 90. Um, I would have loved them at 80, but I understand 90. Um, I think that, that is the smarter, kind of careful adjustment. Um, uh, and the other really interesting change was Brock at 240. Um, I don't think that he uh, is worth 240, but I think that he's a lot more playable at 240 than he was at 260 or 300 where he started. Sure. Um, sure. We're getting in the right direction. Yeah. Um, so that's what I'll say. Uh, I think that you're going to see KO on the table, and I think some people are going to be pissed. Yeah, well, I mean, I think people need to accept that shooting's a thing, right? Like, yeah. this is, we've talked about this a ton of times. Like, shooting is a valid way to play. And sometimes your toys will get shot off. And that's part of what this game is sometimes. Okay. And I think what we, like, it's better to have shooting as a potential way to play than to not have shooting at all. And, like, okay. that doesn't mean which you is need... Though, which is what we lived through last year. Like, sure. last year was the no shooting meta. Like daughters with like daughters, whatever, and Hagnar, whatever. Like, yes, those things aren't great, 
but like daughters wouldn't would have been way less of a problem had shooting been dominant in some way in the meta um you know nope. i'm not saying that that doesn't mean that hagnar wasn't bent it was understand my words carefully i'm just saying like they would have been a lot less impactful had there been shooting around that was just like you know that was just blowing away hags yeah, or, um, or or taking wounds off Marathi before she transformed. Sure, or 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 right, killing the slaughter queen on Cauldron when she's buried deep in the lines, and and blah 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 blah, blowing away Medusa, whatever. Okay, cool. Lion Ranger dumb chariots can unit up now. Good for them. Order Draconis. All right, uh, Dan, you you had made a point about Order Draconis earlier. Yeah. Right? So yeah, I did. Um, so. Order Draconis, a uh, few changes there. So the Dragon Lord's gone up 40 points um, to 380. Dragon Blades have gone down 20 points from 140 mm -hmm. to 120. And the Battalion, the Dragon Lord Host, has gone up 10 points from 130 to 140. So what that means is that the Triple Dragon um, Order Draconis list is 20, 20 points more in total. So turn one, you're going to get your three command points and a triumph roll. Um, but you won't get a, you'll now be over 1950, so you're not going to get your, buy your extra command point. Gotcha. Um, so you're no longer four CP turn one, you're just three CP turn one. Yeah, oh, um, there you go. Yeah. Fixed. Fixed. Um, you can still run four Dragon Lords um, and a Battalion, apparently. Um, and so what you'll probably see is people taking Battalion, two Dragon Lords, and the Dragon Noble on Steed, which gives you the charge reroll bubble. Um, oh, yeah, sure. Forgot about that guy. Yeah. So those were the thoughts that I sort of had on where Order Draconis will look like after you take those into account. Nice. Yeah, no, that's good thoughts. All right. Order Serpentis, whatever. Like, is it this is a thing? Hydras went down ten. Chariots or units and Drake Spawn Knights went down twenty. Good stuff. Next, uh, Phoenix Temple. Okay, so notable things here. Uh, much like with the Luminarch and the Huracanum, the has a dude on it and doesn't has a dude on it are now different prices, right? So oh, yeah. the Flame Phoenix with the Anointed is now at 360. He went down 20. Whereas the Frost Phoenix with the Anointed is 320 from 280. He went up 40. Whereas the Flame version without a dude is now 280. And the Frost version without a dude is 240. Tom, what do you think about this? You know the Phenai. What do you think about these changes overall? Pass. <laughs> Okay. Any other deeper? You want, you want to unpack that a little bit? Just no, a little? I mean, so what I'll say is this. Um, like, no one's going to take them unmounted. Okay. It's not happening. Because you lose the ward save. You lose the four up ward save. Um, and like, I don't I don't care what else you're doing. That four up ward save is worth 40 points, folks. Uh, it it might be hypothetically good for the battalion because the battalion forced you to take unmounted guys. So now you're getting a points discount for that. Uh, but I wrote that battalion off a long time ago. Sure. So uh, the faction is still amazingly costed with Phoenix, uh, the Phoenix guard uh, 30 for uh, 360. Like that, that's a good deal. Um, and so I don't know. I like it. Like, okay. I, I think it's still, I think it's still playable. I think it's still fun. Scourge Privateers, uh, the Caribbean went down 10 points. It's still uh, hot Chinatown garbage. You can now, your Corsair big block went down 20 points, 240 for the Horde discount. Cool. And Chariots can make a unit. Great. Seraphon. Okay. <laughs> Luke's been probably hanging out there in the chat. Forever. <laughs> I just blow <laughs> my... 30 seconds you gave him. <laughs> Sorry, it wasn't that big a deal. Like... I, I think that if you were having good success, you three people who are playing Scourge Privateers, congratulations, you got a minor bump. The world didn't change. So if you were doing good with them before, knock yourself out. There it is. Uh, like, no nerfs. So thumbs up. Everything's great in Scourge Privateer world. It's all positives here. 
uh, Seraphon. All right. So, Dan, you want to talk some about Seraphon? Sure. Um, sort of 10,000 point view is that from the points perspective, minor changes, but still nothing that's going to be majorly, majorly affecting you, as far as I'm aware. Um, the, the bigger changes to Seraphon came into the Allegiance abilities. Right, yeah. Um, yeah. But if we're looking from a point perspective, um, the biggest changes were Skink Star Seer dropping uh, 40 points, uh, Old Blood on Carnosaur went down 20, Stegodon down 20, Troglodon down 20, Croak down 20. Um, so those were sort of the biggest drops with only minor changes then to Saurus Warriors going down 10. So they get a bigger discount at uh, Horde level, so they've gone um, 330. Um, and then minor drops for Chameleon Skinks. Everybody loves Chameleon Skinks. Um, Croxigore, Source Guard, and Source Knights. Um, things. What is that weird beeping noise? Beeping noise? Me? No, I don't hear beeping noise. Okay, that must just be me. Um, I'm stuck. It's your it's your laptop battery probably dying because that's why your camera's off. Um, now, folks, is my camera still off? Yep. Weird. Um, Weird. Um, okay, anyway. Oh, there you um, go. Now there you're you a bouncing bubble. Yeah, that's better. It's fine. Um, oh, wait, so, hold on. You're back. Hey, you're back, Dan. Hey. Um, I think I touched something wrong. Um, well, that sounds funny. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> not not oh, a Slanesh review. Go on. Um, I'm tired. Um, Razodons have gone up 10 points, um, and Salamanders have gone up 10 points. Um, and you can now take them in units um, of 120. Yeah, so basically they oh. got like a, a little discount, right? So you go three of them and they go, yeah. they become 120. Yeah, okay. So they end up at the same price if you buy the unit. All right. Much. So the, as far as I'm aware, I don't know Seraphon much. Um, my only experience is facing the Blumen Ripodactyls popping up three inches away and sure. hitting them twice in the face um, with a million attacks. Um, so sort of outside of that, I understand the major changes are um, in relation to the the summoning um, and the teleport for the Allegiance ability. So now you right. teleport only to nine inches away um, and the summoning points have been tweaked, I think. Yeah, so the summoning points got tweaked slightly. Uh, I don't I don't think in truly massive ways, but they, they got tweaked slightly. Um, your like teleport thing doesn't require a roll anymore. It just happens, right? So like it used to be you rolled a die and like on a one, you didn't go anywhere and on a, you know, blah, 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 whatever, right? Mm -hmm. That's not like that anymore. Now it's just, you, you do it. And uh, and they got a spell lore, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's cool. I mean, they were, they, they were classically like the hungriest faction for their own spell lore because uh because they have triple casters who are just sitting around being like i hope we're in the realms guys <laughs> or i got nothing to do here i'm out yeah. the only comments i've seen on the spell laws though uh, the new spell law is that there's nothing in there that you particularly want to cast um so yeah, i would of... call them all like okay they're yeah. all okay Nothing blew my skirt up. Like I didn't look at it and go, "Ooh, yes, that's that's a great spell." But I did, you know. That, there's some of them that are like, "Okay, that's decent enough. It's fine." Yeah. I mean, I suppose it's not that big a deal because you you still get your summoning points by not casting spells. So maybe it's good they didn't make you really want to want to feel bad. I guess for not casting your spells. But yeah, they were. I would call them okay. That's how I would evaluate them. Um, the the interesting thing we'll be seeing if with the new book to bring them up to. AOS 2, um, should that be the order book that drops before now on Christmas, um, whether we start seeing some source builds, whether we see anything, because effectively that's something you've got to go back and change the war scroll on, um, yeah. and whether we then see something like that, because if I think of itself, I feel like it was years ago that Jack Armstrong was pushing around big blocks of source, um, and we've just never seen them since. Yeah, it's one of those things where like it does it feels like in the modern world, if we were going to have a unit jump to two wounds, like like get the fire slayer treatment, there are very few units which I think actually deserve that treatment. 
one of those is probably some of the Soros things, right? Like those, that sure, maybe yeah. all of the Soros, like those, they were classically that kind of thing, you know? So yeah. like I could, I could absolutely see that happen. Um, so yeah, you know, they just, they don't, I, I've always liked their like ignore rent thing. I think that's a neat, unique thing they have sort of that the whole army's ironclad, yeah. right? I ignore the, the, the rent unless it's neg two. Cool. Neat, neat ability. I think that, uh, so that's good. That communicates some toughness, but again, they've always felt they, they were always kind of a, an army that relied on a lot of toughness, uh, and, and spell casting and that kind of thing. So I just, I think they're, if I were going to nominate any candidate, right. To, to get the two wound treatment, it's the Soros. So. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, and, and by the way, some of those, like, I would love it if the, the Soros guard or whatever temple guard, whatever the heck they're called now. Right. Um, old school temple guard. If they not only became two wounds, but actually like got real armor in some way, <laughs> you know, those guys used to have like classically going back to like old Warhammer. They had like the most ridiculous saves. Uh, so you could probably have them have slightly better saving throws. That would be fine. Be okay with that. Right. So cool. Um, and you know, that would end up making them more the fire slayers treatment feels like it's in order. Oh boy. Goody. Oh, Lordy, Lordy. Look who's 40. Stormcast Eternals. Who wants this one? Tom, you haven't talked for a little while. Talk about Stormcast. Aw. Um, uh, basically, all the new stuff got nerfed by like 10 to 20 points. Um, you mean like reduced, so, not increased? Uh, Most, many more things went down in points than went up in points. Okay, so the only things that people were fielding went up by 10 to 20. <laughs> Ah, which okay, were you're not, you're uh, not rating by count yeah 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 the ballista gavriel um the uh lord castellant lord castellant evocators uh, and evocators and sequiturs yep. yeah the techies went, went up by 10 yeah uh, all those went up 10 to 20 uh and then a bunch of stuff came down um the uh uh the lord arcanum dropped down to 160 which makes him an interesting option um, the Lord Arcanum on Dracona, uh, Dracoline or Griff both came down 20, which I liked. Um, the, the Exorcist came down 20, which is surprising. We now have a 120 wizard. Um, that said, I'd still almost always buy the Encantor, sure. um, because you can drop him down to probably 80 points and I'm almost always buying the Encantor instead. Sure. Um, the, uh, a bunch of the old Paladins and Mounted guys all dropped, um, uh, you know, some number of points, 20 or so. Um, and I like that. Prosecutors dropped 10. Um, but the most interesting change here is the the Vanguard changes. Exactly. The Vanguard changes to me are what actually is the is the interesting part. Like the Paladors going down 20, the Raptors with long strikes going down 10, right? Like, yeah, this is, I think that's actually where the interesting gas is in the engine here. Right. Like there's a list coming that is um that is a mixture of vanguard and um and uh like sequiturs and stuff like that um that is gonna and that would uh use anvil or the uh not anvil guard that would use uh anvils of yeah. the Hammer. and anvils of the held hammer like a combination of those things with teleporting and shooting and um and like piling into the hero phase or shooting in the hero phase like there's a list there yeah i i i like uh, this has been one that a lot of people lamented you know everybody said well stormcast were already pretty middle tier they weren't taking top tournaments why nerf everything well see what i previously said i think there's still like you can right size stuff i think some of those things might have been a bit cheap just because the army doesn't happen to be performing at the top tables doesn't mean you still don't need to make correct point adjustments i'm still like that being said, okay, before the Stormcast players charge in here to, to, to try to take my head off and bring it back to Sigmar, uh, I feel like they could have still gone a little farther with some stuff, uh, with especially with some of the older paladins that just like don't have much of a use or a particular role anymore. But you know, uh, all in all, I think that the the Vanguard wing is the interesting thing. Um, Vanguard chamber. Yeah, or sorry, what did I say? Vanguard wing, sorry. Yeah. In my head. Yeah, I think that that's good. Um, the 
Uh, hey, Will has assured me it's fine. There's no, they, they, they can't lightning strike me. Uh, we're in, we're under total commitment. So they all had to start on the board. I'm safe. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. Dan, any final thoughts on Stormcast? No, it'd be interesting to see how far people lean into the sort of shoot cast build. Um, the shoot cast anvils of Hell and Hammer with long strikes. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting. We've got some people who are taking those kinds of lists, but they're not sort of pushed to the maximum in any way. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Right on. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll again, <clears throat> it's hard to tell if we get back to a world where those other factions are under control. You know, what does the new meta look like? I could see plenty of worlds where a couple different Stormcast builds become viable in, in the meta and are, and are interestingly competitive. It's not like they've, they've ever been really completely out of the picture. They're always around. All right. Uh, Swift Hawk, they can take units Woo! of chariots. Why, why are you? Is it just sword masters and units of chariots, <laughs> Tom? It's, no, it's actually just sword masters. Like, I'm not going to lie. Uh, okay. It's the fact that that sword masters get drug into the uh, into the um, it's it's a twofold thing actually. I'm just going to out this. I saw. I I apologize. The rest of my swift talk brethren. Um, it's the it's a twofold thing. One of those is the fact that um, that one they didn't get axed. Let's just talk about that. They're here for another year. Um. Uh, but more importantly, it's a twofold thing of, uh, the battalion didn't get drug into the GHB. Okay. Why this is important is because if, if, uh, if points don't get updated in a GHB, like, a, like they, and they, and they've been published separate, they maintain their current status and their current pointed cost and their legality according to the FAQ. Okay. I say all that to say you can still run the battalion legally. Um, so that's that's the important point one. And then Swordmasters get drug into the uh, into the allegiance by uh, by the battalion. And with cheap Swordmasters, suddenly you actually have gas between all of the moving parts and the different types of units that are there in the faction. Does their bonus to woundy thing still stack? It does. Cool. <laughs> so I mean they they may be shooting twice and once in the hero phase, once in the shooting phase. Fours reroll ones, twos. Sixty shots each. Wow. <clears throat> Airmail. So, that <laughs> I got a delivery. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and then those Reavers, by the way, are three shots. And then if they get into melee, there's three melee attacks on sure. fours, reroll one, or fours, um, and then wounding on twos, because that still stacks in melee as well. Sure. Every, I mean, basically with that stacking, the army just wounds on twos. <laughs> Swift talk agents, we wound on twos. Cool. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, like, in the general, when he comes in, like, he's plus two to wound, like, naturally. <laughs> Did, said, yes. Uh, German in the comments said it's prime. It's one day shipping. Yeah, delivers fast. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, like, or when he comes in, he gets plus one to wound uh, because he's, like, wielding a lance or something because of, like, the dumb rules for how that works. Um, and you can give him like the one item that gives plus two damage on six pluses to wound, and so he's like all of his attacks that wound are gonna yeah on like be, on a like, two plus three plus he's or like, like yeah he's like, like three they're gonna be like four damage three or four damage like because he does it increases it increases damage and wound when he charges I think oh okay got so, so he goes, goes to four so he goes to four damage attacks on his lance sure yeah <laughs> legendary fighter gives him an extra attack yeah I mean there's like there's a competitive list here folks. And if you've stuck around for three hours, you deserve that. You deserve the Swift Talk <laughs> Agents build. The much lauded Swift Talk Agents build. There uh, you go. Did I mention it's four drops? Sure. Imagine Which it would be that. lower than the average, yes. Yeah. So All right. there like there's an actual list here. And that's not even like you could also mix in Tempest Eye, by the way. Sure. And be pure Tempest Eye. Um and get like pl the plus one or uh, plus one save turn one. Um, and plus two movement or plus four movement for your flyers. Um, 
yeah anyways yeah so like i'm not joking around by saying that there's like a, vi a viable list here sure all right wanderers wayfinder goes down 20 okay cool um the sisters of the thorn go down 10 all right wild riders go down 20 keep going keep going wild riders you got about 60 more points for us you're showing up on the table uh and then the uh what is it? the pathfinders went down 40 okay cool yep wanderers yep. happened they remain wanderers no offense to our wanderers players i know we got a couple watching yep it's all if you enjoyed your wanderers before you did not get any nerfs so mm -hmm. thumbs up all green field here positive okay uh anything more we want to say about points allegiances anything like that uh before we before we close it up i know originally i said we we're gonna do scenarios but unfortunately we ran out of time we'll pick up with scenarios and the rest of that stuff next week we will handle it we're going to continue on the coverage don't worry we will get through this whole book there's a lot here to unpack the points ended up taking a while because we kind of deep dived and had some other conversations but i think it was all worth it uh mm -hmm. any any final thoughts gentlemen dan any final thoughts before we go uh i am jaws clear winner um, oh yeah there you go let's pick overall winner and overall like Whatever. I don't know if there's really a, too, too many overall losers yet, but sure, if you want to pick one. But yeah, Iron Jaw's overall winner for you, Dan. Yeah, because I don't want to say Zinch. Uh. Yep. I get that. Okay, cool. Tom, any final thoughts? Um, winner? Sure. Tomb Kings. They're a real <laughs> army and they're back in the book. <laughs> Because the compendium points showed back up in the book. Yeah, we didn't even talk about that. The fact that the yep. compendium points are back published in the book again. Two so, kings are back, baby. I mean, as long as the tournament allows compendium army, sure, you're back. You get to There's points. a chance. That's right. There you go. Uh, yeah, I mean, I obviously I'm in the Iron Jaws camps. Uh, Spite Rev's thoughts, uh, they're good post book. We'll, we'll talk about Sylvanath. We covered them right at the beginning, Adrian. But yeah, they're good post book. Whatever the Schrodinger's book releases, they are real good. So there you go. Uh, oh, LLV said, quick question. How on earth do you load out Ard Boys? What's the best? Uh, a mixture where you can appropriately have, uh, my argument would be two-handed weapons because you want the wrench so they can actually punch through something with some number of them having shields for the, the save. Uh, I was building they them can tonight. Mix. I was building them tonight for my son. Mm -hmm. and so the answer is either seven or eight to two right like seven to two or uh, seven to three or eight to two is the ratio of two-handed weapons two shields yep to like shield that's guys. the like that's that's where you want to punch uh somewhere around there um and uh if you're going to run them in the ard fist um if you're going to run them in the ard fist uh you're going to want to get you're going to want them to die faster rather than uh than, yeah. than later yeah and and i would argue that um that like they have the dumbest shields in the universe on model like those shields are the they stupidest do. little things i don't know what those yeah. are i don't know who thought those looked like shields or were meant to be shields so like find them replacement shields <laughs> they should have different shields that's they're they're just they're just wretched anyway there we go so that's, I guess this was kind of like the faction and allegiance review. I'll retitle it so that way the people know what this episode is. Uh, but it was a good deep dive. So Dan, hey buddy, thanks a lot, man. Much appreciated. Yep. Hey, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure as always to be on to chat to you guys. Sir, it is always a great time. You are welcome back anytime. As long as you don't set your cat on the microphone, it's pure win. <laughs> so for all of you out there watching, we certainly appreciate it. And uh, we will, uh, we thank you very much for watching. And as always, we'll see you next Wednesday.